Holy shit. Dude, my eyes. Dude, do I have pink eye? Nah. You think I got pink? There's a bug in my room. Bro, I gotta get into the philosophy stream. Joe's faded. Then why would one of my eyes, only one of my eyes be red? Dude, that looks bad. <laughs> that looks bad. <coughs> it's not even itchy, though. Is pink eye itchy? Caden for the sub. Oh, for the love of God. If I have pink eye, dude, and I have to go to class tomorrow. Oh, my God. Look at my eye. Is pink eye, is pink eye itchy? Okay, it's itchy, so I don't have pink eye, because my eye's not itchy. I think it's just irritated. I think I was rubbing my eye. You definitely don't have pink eye. Don't you get pink eye when somebody, like, shits in your face or something like that? Don't you get pink eye when, like, somebody, like, somebody, like, farts in your face or some shit? It's like when there's, like, poop on your pillow. It's like feces. Yeah, it's like feces in your eye. It's when you get poop in your eye. That's when, that's when you get pink eye. You were in my weightlifting class in high school. Yo, that's so cap. That's like actually so cap. My grandpa is 70 years old and he's never read a book in his entire life. How smart is your grandpa? Or what can he read? I'm assuming yes. There's no way your grandpa can't read. WP Paul? Chat, what do you refer to your grandparents as? Quick question here. What do you refer? Everybody always has their own name for their grandparents. What do you, what do you, I feel like most people, it's like granddad, grandpa, pa. No, pa is such a southern thing. Papa, pa. Uh, hello, pa. Like, yeah, no, that's not it. I feel like just grandpa, grandpa, granddad, Mima. Yeah, a lot of people do Mima, nana, shit like that. Yeah, yeah, pop, pop, somebody said, pop, pop. Pop, pop, what do you refer to the grandma as? Pop, pop. Is there another two thing for, for, the, for the grandma? Nanny? Dude, my eye looks like I have pink eye. Holy shit. Oh my god, I hope it goes away. Little rash for the three. You were in my lunch. I, I sat with you. I was wearing my invisibility cloak. What are you fucking Harry Potter? Ryland for the sub swagging for the fringe bets. It doesn't have to be from shit. I got pink eye from a ton of smoke in my eye. It's from any bad shit that gets in your eye. So it's anything that's normally not near your eye that gets in your eye, basically. Damn, so I could have pink eye. But it doesn't itch. Chats, does this look like pink eye? Be real. Be real. Do you think I have pink eye? Don't be a dick and say yes to piss me off. Actually, be real. We're going to diagnose Joe Bartolozzi with a disease here. Do I have pink eye? I say Mimi and Pop Pop. Okay, see, that makes sense. Then it's two, two things. Beef corn for the three inch bets. Uh, uh, Namika? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Thank you for the three inch bets. Ace here, I'm a big fan. I was wondering if you listened to Joji's new album. I have not yet. I've listened to most of Drake's new album. I've not listened to Joji's, but I do like Joji's music. All right, can we get into the philosophy stream? I've been live for fucking 20 minutes. We've just been sitting here. Rinse your eye with water? No. I refuse. It's just irritated. Okay, let's get into this. Chat. We got we got like four videos here that we're gonna base our talks off of. Um, but if you've been in if you okay, if you don't know what a philosophy stream is, I'm a philosophy and religion major in college. I'm still in college, I'm a junior in college. Um I like talking about like morality, death, fucking life, uh anything really. Philosophy kind of encompasses anything that is like uh objective facts to make a subjective decision almost. Um, in like broader schemes of shit that we don't have like exact knowledge on, right? Um, and so I'm going to start the videos with this, but if you guys do have any philosophical questions that you want to kind of get me off topic with, that's fine. I normally don't like going off topic all the time. Uh, but with philosophy days, I don't really care. Uh, we're going to base our, we're going to base our little fucking, um, reactions slash talks off of these videos. Uh, but then we're probably going to go on long ass tangents. Maddie for the three. I've watched you on YouTube for a year now. Finally able to watch you here. Have a good day. Enjoy this. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for the three bits. I love for the three bits. I'm a newly licensed doctor. According to my observations, you do have pink eye. Fuck you. You shouldn't be a doctor. Kylan for the three bits. Are you are you participating in thank miss on December 10th? If not, you should. What is thank miss? 
What is Thankmas? Thankmas. Is that like Christmas and Thanksgiving in between? Thankmas is a is teaming up with World Central Kitchen to battle world hunger. <clears throat> they want to raise ten million dollars. Is it an event on December tenth? Um, if it is, I would assume I could do a charity stream for that. Would you guys want to do that? That's on a Saturday. I could do a little Tiltify campaign for Thank Miss if it's on December 10th. Uh, Leo for the 300 bits says, I failed NNN. Congratulations, buddy. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, I'll, I'll write that down. Uh, but you guys are probably going to have to remind me. But I'll set up, I'll set up until, I, it, it doesn't say that it is December 10th. Thank Miss Tiltify. Um, it doesn't say that it's December 10th, but I would be down to try and set it up. Uh, all right. Let's get into the first video. Uh, most people have never been 20. No one have ever lived. Good morning, Hick. It's Tuesday. I recently got to wondering when the median human being was born, and in researching that question, I learned something interesting and surprising. But let's start with that hypothetical median person. So obviously, we don't have, like, super firm statistics on how many people have ever lived or when they died or any of that, but through a mix of population modeling and genetic research, our best current guess is that about 117 billion modern humans, as we are known, have ever lived. Damn! 117 billion modern humans, and I'm the main character. That's so crazy, right, chat? I <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And you know, like, and it's just all—it's just all here for me. I'm not, I'm, dude. I hate people that do that, though. I actually hate people that do that. I watched this guy in history videos. No, you watched. Oh wait, you might have watched him. His brother, I watched more in high school than him. Because I would watch him in science classes. He's like the history guy. His brother is like the science dude. Um, but now they do actually like cool videos that aren't like just school based. Anyways. Um, now nah, people that think they're the main character though are actually crazy. Like when you're sitting here and you think that like all of earth and the universe was here for you. Like holy shit. Like not only are there 8 billion people in the world. But like there have been so many people before that lived. So I was trying to figure out when did the person in the middle of that 117 billion live? The, uh, I'm bad at math, 58.5 billionth person. Now I probably would have guessed like 1900, 1750, something like that, because there are way more humans than there used to be. I mean, fewer humans lived on Earth 6,000 years ago than currently live in Mexico City. 7% of the people who've ever lived are currently alive. So the median human can't- Wait, what? 7% of anybody who's ever lived is alive right now. Is that a lot or a little? I don't know. I feel like that's a lot, right? Can't be that far. Because humans have been alive for a fucking shit long. Or a shitload of time removed from us, right? Except, no, that's wrong. At least according to the Population Reference Bureau, the 58.5 billionth person probably was born sometime between 10 and 100 CE, so about 2,000 years ago. That is to say, of all the people who've been born, most were born and died before the Roman Emperor Nero or the Malian Emperor Mansa Musa. They lived and died before the idea of minutes. Yo, chat, you could go back in time anywhere to when humans lived. Where are you going? Humans have to be alive at, at the time you go there. Where are you going? I'm going to the caveman era or early 1600s. Uh, I'm probably going to convince them that I'm a wizard. Um, and then I'm going to take over the world. That would be my general gauge uh, or my general plan of action, right? I'm going to go back in time, right? To essentially the medieval era. Like when everybody was a dumbass, right? Like, you know how there was, like, that, that brief period of time where, like, everyone was stupid, but, like, they didn't, like, murder each other, and then everybody was stupid and killed each other, and then, like, only a few people were smart? I'm gonna, like, go to that era, like, the 1600s, right? And then I'm gonna, nah, probably maybe a little bit before that, maybe, like, the, the 1200s. They're gonna kill you? That's crazy how I'll bring an AR-15 and they won't step a fucking inch near me. Like, that's, <laughs> like... Like, you think that you think people in the 1400s are going to be able to fucking kill me? No shit. No, like, actually no shot. Like, there's no chance. Like, <laughs> they don't get near me. 
I'm not like, I, bro, I'm going to go there. I'm going to bring a slide. I'm going to bring like a phone or some piece of technology. I'm going to claim that like I am like all knowing. And then I'm going to literally just control the world <coughs> with like an iPhone or a Rubik's Cube. I'm going to bring a Rubik's Cube to people in the 1500s and they're going to freak the fuck out. They're going to freak the fuck out. They won't know what to do with themselves. If I bring an iPod Nano, holy shit. Holy shit. That's like the coolest thing they've ever seen in their entire lives. Ever. Like, they could be like 80 years old. The coolest thing they've ever seen is an iPod Nano. That's so sad. AJ on for the sub. But then when you think about it, people are going to be saying the same damn thing about us like 400 years from now when we're all fucking dead. Seconds before guns, before... How are you going to charge the phone? A solar panel? Buddy, I'm going to pack a backpack. I've thought this through. If time travel exists, I'm going back in time. Yeah, but then it's going to smell like poop. That's what they always say. The first thing you notice if you go back in time is how bad the world smelled. Because they didn't have hygiene. So everything just smells like poop. And like feces. Because people just throw their shit on the ground. Emergence of Christianity and Islam as global forces and before potatoes or pineapples were in Afro-Eurasia. This median person almost- What's one invention now that would make you rich as shit in like the 1200s? Toilet paper. Toilet paper. They don't care about soap. Stop saying cars and shit because they're not going to have the technology to keep making that. It just has to be something that could still be replicated. Something that like we know how to make now that they don't know how to make, but they could make back then. A razor. They had razors. They had knives that they would shave their face with and shit. A bidet. You're kidding me. The wheel. The wheel. You think they didn't, you think they didn't know about a fucking wheel? They knew about a wheel, bro. In the 1200s, you think they didn't know about a fucking wheel? You think they didn't come up with the wheel yet in the 1200s? You deadass think 800 years ago, humans didn't know about a wheel? They, they didn't understand the concept of a fucking wheel? Okay. I am peanut for the sub swa for the thousand bits. Thoughts on Drake's new album? It's good. Uh, I think there's obviously some better songs um, than others. But I also don't listen to albums that much. I generally just listen to individual songs. Well, certainly could not read or write. They probably did not believe in one God. And if they survived to adulthood, which they probably didn't, they were probably farmers and probably had many children, some of whom almost definitely died. Now, when I was young, I was taught that- Bro, you want to hear what's fucking crazy? I went to an old ass graveyard like three weeks ago, right? And I'm walking around there and every graveyard is from like the 1800s. Guess how, how like, old the average person in that graveyard died. There was two, there was two segments, and it was so weird. It was so weird. Because, like, you're, I was walking through the graveyard. I'm looking at these headstones from people in, from the 1800s. Like, people that were alive when slavery was still a thing, right? Um, and either, people either lived to their 60s. Or they died at like nine. I saw maybe 30 gravestones of like 10 year old kids that died. Why is your eye so red? Buddy, I don't know. I already talked about this for like 10 minutes. I saw like 10. It, you know, that's like so sad though. It was like because you would either die really young or you would like live until like a normal life. But like people lived into their like early 60s uh, is what it seemed like. And then they had like. Every, because they, the way a gravestone, or not a gravestone, the way a graveyard is usually set up is there's blocks for your family. And so there would be like the dad and the mom, right? That would live to like their 60s. And then there would be like a few kids that died in their like 30s or like also lived into their 60s. And then there was like seven gravestones of just kids that died. Just like they tried having a kid, they died at birth. They died when they were eight. They died when they were six. Like, they didn't live until... Because they probably... Like, when you're that young, you're just, like, you're, you're prone to fucking disease. In the old days, the old days were never quite defined, life expectancy was 30, which I took to mean that the average adult died at 30. And that's not... See, that's not true. Everybody always talks about that. Oh, we're living so much longer than we used to. That is true to a degree. But the reason the average lifetime, like, 400 years ago was so young 
is because everybody died in the first 10 years of their life. After that, you usually lived into your, like, 60s. Or, like, the average, like, like not, like, 75, 80, what it is today. But, like, people would still live into their 50s and 60s. Case. At least in Sweden, where we have relatively good data, if you lived to be 10 in the early 1800s, your life expectancy was around 46. And in 46 is still young. 46 is still young. What do you think, like, a good age to die at is? Okay, this is, this is a weird question. What is, like, an okay age to die at? 98? That's very old. I would say, like, late 70s. And it's, you know what's even more sad? Everybody always says 50 is, like, is, like, your midlife. Like, you know when people have a midlife crisis in their 50s? It's actually not a midlife crisis. Your midlife is like 35. If you're a man in the U.S., this, the middle of your life is 35. When you're 35 years old, you are half dead. Likely. Maybe even more. Like, I'm 20 years old. I'm expected in America to live to 75. So I am already done, like what? More than a fourth of my life. I'm almost done a third of my life. That's crazy. Like, when you're 25, you're a third dead. Wow. Ari for the sub. And every year, am I wrong in saying every year is going by faster and faster? I feel like life's on a fire. I'm, I'm on a jet plane right now, bitch. I am zooming. I am zooming. Like, dude, 10 years ago, life was so slow. Now, dude, every... I remember last last Monday, I was like, dude, this... I was like, next Monday is going to... I was like, because every, every Monday is like the start of a new week, right? I know everybody says Sunday is the start of the new week, but the, you're fucking a capper, Okay. Fuck that. Also, yeah. You know what pisses me off? Why is Sunday the start of the fucking week? Can we make a petition to make Monday the start of the fucking week? I know it's probably for, like, some, like, religious things, obviously, and that's why, like, Sunday is, like, the Lord's Day in America, and that's why it's, like, the start of the week. But, like, generally speaking, the start of the work week is Monday. So why the fuck is the start of the regular week on a Sunday? It pisses me off. Anyways. On every Monday. I'm, like, I think... I Every Monday, I think back of, like, the previous week. I was like, damn, that week went by fast as shit. This is what I was thinking last Monday. I was like, next Monday's probably gonna go by slow as fuck. Dude, snap of a finger. I teleported in time. I teleported seven days in the future. I don't even remember what happened last week. What did I do last week? I don't know. I'm here now, though. Life is going by so fast. Like, the summer... Dude, it's November. School started two months ago. What the fuck? Like, I'm almost done my college semester. I'm past halfway. What the fuck? Be quiet. Fuck you. Faithy for the sub, Jack for the sub, Pamela. Pama Pamela. Holy shit, I can't say anything. Oh, my God. Dude, I'm talking like a robot. Oh, my God. Am I a lizard person, chat? For the 300 bits. I would want to get to, like, 80-ish because I wouldn't want to depend on others to care for me all day. True. The second I start shitting myself all the time is the second where, like, life goes downhill. Expert for the 1,000 bits. What do you think happens after you die? Uh, uh, stupid for the hundred bits or for the thousand bits. Um, thank you for the thousand bits. Uh, an expert for the thousand bits. What do I think happens after I die? Uh, I don't know. I went into my philosophy and religion major assuming I would uh come to a conclusion uh about that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no human will ever know. Uh, I'm going to spend my entire life trying to figure out the meaning of life. Uh, I may find a meaning, uh, but I will die before I know what happens after I die. My goal is to be able to be okay with death when I die. You know what I mean? Crucible for the five gifted subs. Like, you want to know, like, I want to be okay with dying before I die. I am not okay with dying right now. But... When I'm okay with dying, I still don't think I will know what happens when I die. I think eventually I'll just be like, okay, I've completed my life. I think I'll be okay with dying after, like, I've raised kids fully and they have kids and they're all on their own. You know what I mean? I feel like that's when most grandparents are okay with dying is when, like, everyone that they've kind of, like, given life to is okay. Twitch for the 300 bits. Keep up the good work and keep making amazing videos. Thank you. And Crucible again, thank you for the five gifteds. Vin run for the three inch bits. One of my friends died from an overdose and they revived him and he said he saw nothing. Hmm. Did he die?
did his heart stop? Um, and I don't know. Near death experiences, uh, NDEs, uh, Helix for the sub. Uh, it's an actual thing. Your heart can stop. You can be declared legally dead for like five minutes and then brought back to life, right? A lot of people in that time proclaim that they see their God, God, nothing, whatever, right? All of those, um, pe like people always cite those as like proof that God exists. I don't know if it is, but scientifically, when you're dying, your brain creates basically like a drug trip uh, in your mind to produce what you want to see, right? And so that's why everybody sees kind of like their own religion to a degree in a near-death experience. Um, but so I don't know the factuality of that shit, but uh, it is it is it is interesting to look into that stuff. Somebody just said Red Robin Yum, buddy. What the fuck? Crucible for the three hundred bits. I coded when I was younger because of amoxicillin, but we had that combo. But yeah, it just felt like I was asleep and I woke up, but I didn't see anything. See, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the one thing that brings me somewhat at peace is that when I die, even if there's nothing, my matter is still in the universe. You know what I mean? Like, my, my atoms are still there. <laughs> but life makes no sense. Bro, I left the gym the other day. I'm sitting there. It's called DMT. Buddy, I know everything and anything about fucking drugs. Dimethyltryptamine. We know. Um... Dude, I'm sitting at a gym, or I'm sitting at my gym, and all I can think about is, like, how the fuck did the universe start? Say there's nothing. Say there's nothing. Let's just pan this out. Let's just pan this out, chat. Say there's nothing at all, and we die, and that's it. Why the fuck did life start? I understand that when the Earth was created mRNA molecules started and that started amino chains and then bloom life started. But why? What what did early life have a why did early life start in any way? What was their purpose? And why why did early life decide to make other life? You know what I mean? Like why do we have kids? What the fuck? What I I understand it's like energy con like um conservation and you want to be able to like keep creating energy and that's kind of like the idea of life but like why like uh, I don't get it like that's the biggest why ever how the fuck did the universe start yo a big bang theory whatever okay what the fuck was before that if there was something before that if there wasn't something before that how the fuck did the big bang just start there was nothing and then there was something it doesn't make sense we're so limited by our human perception of how life works that, like, we can't understand how inorganic matter can just come to be. But that's just how it is. And we just have to accept that. Sorry for the off-topic the off topic rant there. Gage for the 300 bits. 3-inch for the 1,000 bits. Can you play the dark picture games? It's made by the same people who made the quarry. I wrote down some game by the people who made the quarry. What did I write down? Hold up. Devil in me. Isn't that the same? Uh, that's what somebody said about the people that made the quarry. I might just go on Steam, look at the people that made the quarry, and then just download some of their other games. Alexander for the sub. Joe, I'm stupid. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to be here or not. No, you could be here. You could be here and then you become smart. 1841 England. If You, you just gave me a midlife crisis? Dude, you should think about this shit. I am learning. I am learning right now. Uh, in like college classes, college is, is useless in a lot of ways. Uh, but a lot of psychology classes are pretty cool. Um, and there's a lot of like, there's a lot of psychologists because I take a lot of psychology classes with philosophy. Uh, there's a psychologist called Kohlberg and he has a theory on like psycho like development, right. And how people like view earth and everything or not view earth, view life, morality, shit like that. And there's like five, there's like six stages, right. And a lot of psychologists say that, like, 95% of the population does not, uh, like, get to the last stages of, like, life. Like, psychologists basically say that most people in life stay as NPCs. Kohlberg's morality theory? Yes. Kohlberg's morality theory, and then there was another one. It started with a P. I'm not going to pull it up because I can't show it on stream because that would be, like, illegal to show college lessons on stream. But, um... A lot of psychologists believe that, like, 
many people in life cannot reach a level of morality or a level of universal understanding that some people can. Not because they're incapable of it genetically, it's because they don't try to. Like, so many people get stuck in the actual, like, the matrix. I'm not trying to sound like Andrew Tate here. But a lot of people, like, psychologists basically say that, like, a lot of people get stuck in kind of this, like, society loop and never actually reach a different level of morality or understanding of the universe. 17 for the sub. Cool count for the three bits. Would you rather know how you die or when you die? Brody for the sub. Chat, would you rather know how you die or when you die? When you die. Uh, for me. Knowing how you die is almost uh, useless. Um, because the idea of knowing how you die in this hypothetical scenario is it's unpreventable. If you tell me how I die, I will guaranteed die from that, regardless of how I prevent it. So say I say how I die, and you say I'm going to get hit by a car. I'm going to avoid cars for the rest of my life, only to die to a car anyway, so it's pointless. So I would rather know when I die, so I can just live my life how I would normally live it, with kind of the knowing of like, hey, I'm going to die in 52 years and 27 seconds, or some shit. You know what I mean? Uh, give me this user for the three bits. Since we're on the topic of death, how do you feel about the eight? How do you feel of the eight minute theory? The theory that the sun will go out and we won't notice till eight minutes after. That's not a theory. That's just the speed of light. That's just when the sun die. The sun won't die in our lifetime. The sun will die. Not in our lifetime. When the sun does die, that's not a theory. When the sun, the light travels in such a speed that the sun's, like, so far away that when the sun dies, people on Earth wouldn't know for eight minutes. But by the time the sun dies, humans will either be so developed that they're on other planets or we're dead. <laughs> like, one of the two. It's not... I'm not worried about that. And I won't be alive for it anyway. Pack for the three bets. How do you feel about nursing homes? For me... Uh, when, when live slash think without someone deciding for them, what? How do you feel about nursing homes? Someone deciding for them, that's when I get mad because when you're suffering and your family is keeping you there because they can't let go, I volunteer at a nursing home and I've seen this done many times and it makes me so mad. So you're saying like people kept on life support or like nursing home, like somebody being left in a nursing home is not bad, right? Kai Reezy for the sub. Someone being left on life support for an insane amount of time when the family refuses to let go, I think is immoral. If you, if like, if you have say a grandparent and they're on life support for like a month and they're declared as brain dead, like they're a vegetable, um, and you decide to keep them alive, that's immoral. Like it's suffering almost like pull the plug at that point. You know what I mean? to be 20 your life expectancy was around 60 it's just that overall life expectancy was brought down to below 30 because child mortality was so high do you think there's any other life forms somewhere in the universe that are exactly like humans yes the universe is so large that there is a likely chance that there is somebody with your exact name that may be in an alternate universe there might be you there might be a replica of you dude it looks like i have pink eye it dead ass looks like i have pink eye but it's only on that side of my eye. I don't know. Um, no, yes, for sure. Uh, light thinks it's the fastest thing in the universe until it realizes that darkness is always there first. Some random crackhead I met on the street named Paul. <laughs> he, some random crackhead gave you that knowledge that darkness is always faster. Are you high? No. I swear to God I'm not high. Like, dude... I, when people, okay, for the people that are saying I'm high because my one eye is red, you don't understand what it looks like to be high. Only one of my eyes is red, and it looks like diseased red. It doesn't look like high red. Twitch for the 300 bets. Uh, Joe, what you say right now will be my Fortnite name. Donut. Kyrezy for the sub. You're half high? That's not possible. Anyways. The idea of different life forms existing uh, is, in my opinion, like, almost factual. Like, there has to be another life form. With how Earth created life, there is another planet that has life. 
Um, even if it's rare, okay? Uh, I understand the rarity of Earth and, and life on Earth and the Goldilocks zone, uh, but the universe is absurdly large. There are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on every beach in the entire Earth. Uh, and every star, not every star is a planet, but if there's, if there's more stars than there is grains of sand, there's definitely a planet that has life on it. Um, multiple, probably. Whether or not they're like humans, I don't know. There may be. Uh, there's a lot of theories that say there's, there's alternate use. Uh, kind of like the multiversal theory that every decision you make, there's another you in a different universe that made the opposite decision. Like, say you take a 50-question multiple-choice test. There is a you that has answered every possible choice on that test. Uh, easily for the 300 bits. Uh, and another 300 bits. My friend overdosed months ago. He's been brain dead since, but they can't legally pull the plug since his brain stem still works. So he breathes and has a heartbeat on his own. So he would starve before dying. It's so horrible because the friend is gone, but the body's still there. We all wish we could pull the plug, but his family is going to go into debt paying for his care. And they're not allowed to pull the plug or they don't want to. MF for the sub. That is so sad. I'm sorry that your friend's going through that and that you're going through that. And their family too. Um, yeah, but that's crazy. They legally can't. That sucks. Oh my god. Because his brain stem still works, but he is brain dead. Oh my god. Wow. MF for the sub. These days one sometimes hears that the only reason life expectancy- I'm gonna go live stream myself in a pre-K and tell everybody Santa isn't real. Uh, I don't think you should do that. I think, um, people having the, uh, like, imagination as a child, uh, actually fosters creativity. Um, I mean, obviously everybody, like, uh, has their own opinion on whether or not Santa's real. Uh, Santa's obviously real, chat, by the way. But, um, it does foster cre creativity telling your kids that, that, that Santa's real. But Santa's real, 100%. Santa's definitely real. Infancy has gone up is because child mortality has gone down, and that's also not the case. In 1865 Italy, even if you survived childbirth, your life expectancy was under 50. Today, it's well over 70. Like, it's worth remembering that 200 years ago, about a quarter of all humans died of- You're playing with fire? Oh, I know. Oh, I know. That's why I don't like talking about that topic. I don't like getting on the Santa topic. I don't want to- I don't want to- I don't want to call- I don't know- I don't know my ch what my chatter's opinions on that is. So, and most okay, the, the, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Died under 40. Also, girls <laughs> who survived childhood had a very high chance of dying in childbirth. In some communities, over 10%. That said, child mortality was very, very high. Like, in 1800, about 30% of people born in France died before the age of 10, but it used to be even higher. Crucible says, we need some straight-up motherfuckers, though. Them imagine bitches are lit, but, like, be for real. We need some non-imaginers. Look at Elon Musk. Bro is Santa. Elon Musk is not Santa. Elon Musk is a computer. He is, he, is a, he is a computing system. He is the first human that is not a human. He is a, he is a computer. <laughs> Beef corn for the three hundred vets. Is it cringe of me to say I never want to be unplugged? No, it's your own choice. Um, but like... If I was declared as brain dead, uh, which is something that you don't uh, come back from, by the way. Uh, it's an argument that people use in abortion as well as other legal standings. Is that um, when you're declared as brain dead, uh, you're legally dead in the government. You will not come back from that. If you're brain dead, you, generally speaking, will never come back. Um, and so if you are brain dead, pulling the plug is just removes the process of you just living kind of uh, by machines, uh, quicker. Uh, Rage for the three bits. Uh, and Bulbasaur for the sub. If they ever invented a pill that made you live a thousand years and it would be able to be available to everybody, would you take it? Yes. Have you ever watched Attack on Titan? No. I would not be immortal if given the chance, but I would definitely live a thousand years. Most people, uh, agree with that. Uh, being immortal is awful. Uh, I used to say yes to being immortal. Uh, the reason I would say no to it now is, um, you would go insane, uh, at some point. Being immortal kind of removes the purpose of life, uh, in itself, and you would, you would either, if you were immortal, you would either basically become a god, or you would kind of lose your mind. 
uh, because having that much inv- information in one singular brain over thousands and thousands of years and millions of years would be awful. Uh, if I could be immortal with the stipulation that I could die if I wanted to, yes. But if it was like a curse and I was immortal forever and I couldn't die, then no. Um, but a thousand years, definitely. Sick for the sub. Higher. Like in Iron Age France, life expectancy wasn't 28 or 30. It was 10 or 12. Our best current guess is, is that when the median person was born... Okay, to- can we go into the next video? I don't even remember what this motherfucker's talking about. <laughs> I, I am sorry, Mr. Green. We're going on to the next video. Because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about anymore. You probably don't exist. I think we've watched this. Have we watched this? Have we watched this? I don't think we have, actually. Because this was queued for a while. We're going to watch it anyway. Where'd you come up with that title, genius? On the fucking toilet? Well, yes, actually. And that's because today we're... (laughs) Mainly going to be talking about... <laughs> a consciousness. Oh and my Jesus, god, bro, I was trying to see his toes. What the fuck? Fear. fear is an automatic response in your brain to perceived scary shit. But fear. The, the grippers. Itself is not under your conscious control. It is automatic. And if it's automatic, then that is not you. It is a thing your brain does, but it is not a thing that you do, conscious you. So presumably. Dude, that- I always think about. The the idea, a lot of people believe that the consciousness and the brain are separate. But, like, if they're intertwined, and a big reason I believe they're intertwined is because of Alzheimer's and dementia. And the fact that people with Alzheimer's and dementia forget themselves, basically. Like, they lose their own personality to a degree. Um, What if we're just animals that think we're conscious? <laughs> Does that make any sense? Like, I, dude, I, this is, like, getting into, like, deep philosophy where it's to the point where I can almost not explain it. But it's, like, what if we're animals that are so highly evolved that, like, we we have a consciousness, yes. Like, we, we understand the world around us and all this other shit. But we're still limited by human perception. So how we value our consciousness is actually less valuable than it is. Because we're still limited by many, many things, Right. Like, everybody always perceives our consciousness as, like, this power that all humans have. But it's still limited. So what if we're just, like, we're just kind of highly developed, like, homo sapiens. Or we are homo sapiens. But we're highly developed humans, but we're still not, like, we're not a, we're not, like, a meta being. We're not, like, a god. We just have thoughts. We understand language. We're not that complicated when you think about it. Give for the Thringe bits. Is there a, there is a limit to the brain? Yes. There's definitely a limit to the brain. I mean, the brain can hold an absurd amount of information comparable to how much you actually receive in your lifetime. But uh, if you were immortal, it would definitely, it would definitely start having some problems. In your brain, you don't control. And then there's stuff in your brain that you do control. Stuff that is you. Let's find out where the line is then, shall we? Well, for most of the day so far, you've been blinking and breathing automatically. Congratulations, keep it up, but now you're thinking about it, so you're dead. God, I fucking hate when people- I fucking hate when people bring that shit up. Oh my god, now I'm just gonna blink non-stop. Ugh. Bring it manually. Anyway, you'll forget about it in a few minutes, and all of that will become automatic again. So that is not you. Okay, what next? Well, what about the things you like? Surely we choose those. Let's say your music taste, for example. Good music activates the part of the brain dealing with euphoric reward response, or the bit that makes you feel nice. Okay, fine, but did you choose to prefer Metallica over Beethoven, or over the blood-curdling sound of two cats banging outside? No, obviously not, otherwise you'd just choose to prefer everything. Even though you can choose what to listen to, the preference itself, what presses your musical, or foodish, or social buttons, is out of your control. So- oh my god! So that is also not you. Okay, so we'll push the line over a bit more. You don't control what's Because you're get- not forcing yourself to like something. As you, you don't control basic survival stuff, you don't control what you enjoy. So okay, but at least you can choose what your brain is processing, right? Where to put your mind. Yeah, well, not always. If you're a native English speaker or just fluent in English, you're not choosing to understand these words, are you? They're just coming in and your brain is doing the work for you. Like- Oh 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, it's just doing it. I can't control it. And that's so like once you learn a language, you can't tr like when you're learning a language, you control your understanding of it by thinking. But once it's fluent, it's just there. Oh my god. Dude, you know what's crazy too is when you're okay, you know how when you're quiet and you think in your mind. You don't talk and think in your mind at the same time. You can slightly, but thinking is basically just talking in your head. When you talk, you you're not like you're just saying your thoughts immediately instead of keeping them quiet, you're just immediately outputting them. And so something that's weird for me specifically is when I stream for like four hours, I don't think at all when you think about it, right? Because I'm thinking to a degree, but I'm not, I'm not ever processing that in my own mind. I'm just immediately saying whatever I'm thinking. Like I don't have, when I'm on stream and I'm talking to you guys, I'm just immediately saying whatever I'm thinking the second I think it. Whereas you guys are sitting there and actually comprehending what you're saying. So like when I'm streaming, I'll end stream sometimes. And it's like I teleported four hours. It's like I didn't exist for four hours. It's very weird. It's creepy almost. Nick for the sub. Try to hear these syllables without the meaning. An adequate kitchen. A stationary football. Two cats reenacting a scene from the motion picture Titanic having provided a rubber ring for the mice. An anthropomorphized dog off for his final exam before qualifying as a lumberjack. A man successfully combining his responsibilities as an accountant with his love of nautical tourism. A man with a hitherto unexplained eye condition attempting to play a piece of music on the abacus while not gripping the abacus correctly. And a doctor who is about to destroy a burger as well as the majority of his left hand with the help of, if I am not mistaken, a silenced Walther PPK. <laughs> That's impossible because language processing, when you're good enough, is automatic. So that is not you. Okay, Jesus, but what about high-level stuff? What about playing instruments or driving a car? That must take awareness. That can't be automatic. Yeah, okay, probably, for the first while. But if you play an instrument, you may have noticed your fingers just know what they're doing automatically. Or if oh you drive, my you know god! To dude, dude, the worst is literally what he's about to say. When you're driving a car, if you guys don't have your license yet, like, whenever you get your license, or the people that do, when you drive, like, a long distance, or, like, a distance, like, somewhere that you've been before, usually, not, like, somewhere new. When you're driving somewhere new, you're following directions, blah, blah, blah. You're kind of, like, you're kind of zoned in, right? But when you're taking your 500th trip to school, you zone out. You, like, I will literally forget. Like, I'll be in my own mind. I'm not, like, I didn't, like, just zone out of time. But, like, I'll teleport from, like, place to place. It's crazy. You just go on autopilot. You stop at stoplights. You you go when it's green. You don't even think. You're just a robot. You're still thinking in your mind about like whatever the fuck you're doing, listening to music, uh, thinking about a test, whatever, right? But you're just on autopilot. Crucible for the three bits. Here's something for everybody to do right now. Look around you. Your brain automatically exactly knows what it would feel like to lick anything in the room. That is true. You can make your voice in your head sound however you want. If you want to sound like Joe, you can. Super high or low, you can. You can control it. You can control it. Have fun. Yeah. M. Madison for the sub. Normally, when you think in your head, though, uh, it's either silent or, like, you're thinking in your own voice. But you can, you can literally think in any accent, any voice that you want to. Get from A to B in a car and spend the entire time having an argument in your head. The voice in my head already sounds like Joe. That's fucking weird. With your dad, because he still hasn't bought you that fucking Etch-a-Sketch while never actually thinking about changing gear or pushing the pedals. So high-level motor coordination, when you practice it, can be completely automatic too. Yeah, okay, but at least simple motor tasks are in your control, moving a hand or a leg or whatever. Yeah, or not. Very simply, Benjamin Libet did a fairly famous experiment with getting people to press a button randomly when they felt like it. He was monitoring their brain activity while they did this. The weird thing is that the brain seemed to be preparing to push the button a disturbing length of time before people were reporting choosing to- Bro! I've done that before! You know when you're like sitting down and you don't want to get up? And then you just stand up? Your body recognizes you're gonna do that before you decide to do it. Like, try and trick your own body out. 
sit there and be like, I'm not going to get up. And then just get up. And like your, your body still knows. It's fucking weird. To press the button itself. There are problems with this experiment for sure, but it does oh, seem- Oh, when you wake up in the morning, the alarm goes off. You just kind of like fucking jolt out of bed. Oh my god. A bit like the systems underneath you, underneath being conscious, might be way more essential than the conscious systems themselves. And that choosing to do stuff is maybe just a game the brain plays afterwards to justify- Oh, uh, what I just don't get is how a- Like, I understand a brain is very complex with neuroconnections and transmitters and all that, right? <coughs> how the fuck does that make a consciousness? How does that make a personality? And, like, why? Because there's a section of us that is not intertwined with our own mind or our own body, right? Like, you look at yourself in the mirror, that's you. You you need to eat. Uh, or, like, yeah, you know that's you. That's your brain. That's your brain telling you that. When you look around, that's your brain. When you eat food, that's your brain telling you to do that. That's not you. But, like, there's still a part of you, like, when you're pondering on existence and shit like that. Like, philosophical thought. Like, what's your purpose in life? Like, that has nothing to do with survival. So why is our brain capable of doing it? Why is our brain, even if it's in your brain, it is in your brain. But why? Why is our brain able to do that? If it's literally just, if it's not aiding our survival. Knowing a meaning to life. Knowing, like, knowing why we're here. That's not helping me survive. No other animal does that. Even animals, and something that's weird and, and, and that I find fascinating is a, a lot of animals like dolphins, elephants, some birds, they'll mourn the death of, of their loved ones. Uh, elephants can grasp that when a loved one dies, they are gone forever. However, an elephant does not know that they themselves will die. The, they understand death and that they're the death, like the people that die do not come back. But I think I, I'm almost sure that elephants cannot understand that they themselves are also going to die. Death is applicable and death is forever, but they don't understand that death is for all. But humans do. Doesn't make sense what it was already going to do. How do you know that? I don't know. I've read a bunch of articles. How do I know that they knew that? I don't know. But I'm going to trust the scientist that spent 10 years on fucking studying elephants' brains on whether or not an elephant can, uh, can grasp his own death. Anyway, maybe. What about apes? No. Something that's fascinating with other animals comparable to, like, other animals have consciousnesses. Octopuses or octopi. A lot of animals can have multiple consciousnesses. Or, or conscious nigh. That's not a thing. Consciousnesses. Other animals can have multiple consciousnesses. We have one, um, but a lot of people, a lot of philosophical people kind of like uh, have sections of, con of, of your consciousness. And you know how like some days you'll feel different than others and some days you'll think different than others? That's your consciousness kind of morphing. You're still you, but your consciousness is kind of like slime. Like it's bendable. Like it's, it's, it's movable. You can do whatever, right? And... Other, other animals have that as well. Uh, some animals have multiple consciousnesses like octopi or octopuses. But, like, going back to the gorilla shit, they have a consciousness. Gorillas can understand sign language, but they can't ask questions. Gorillas can communicate and talk about things briefly. Like, some gorillas know thousands of words in sign language. But they can't understand that a human or other animals around them have more knowledge than themselves and ask them a question. They can answer questions. They might, I don't know. I don't know if they can ask simple questions like, where is this? But they don't understand. Like a gorilla is not going to be like, why am I on earth? Am I going to die? They can't understand that. Okay, so fear isn't you, survival stuff isn't you. They don't only answer, they could have like a conversation. Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it. Can gorillas ask questions? Like I don't know if they ask questions in their own mind. Like, do they have philosophical thought? That's why I got this question mark tattoo. It's just like that is the root of all human knowledge, is just be it's just confusion, not understanding things. 
apes are not able to ask questions themselves. In a human slash primate conversation, questions are asked by humans and answered by apes. Apes are incapable of doing the reverse. That's fascinating. That they can answer questions, but they cannot ask them. Preference isn't you. Lots of motor control isn't you. Christ, what else is going on in there that isn't you? Well, a fair bit, actually. Like, oh, you know. Balancing when you walk, or falling asleep and waking up, or remembering who you are, or where you are, or when you are, or fetching memories in the first place, or taking all of the perceptions that are coming in through your senses, and turning them into a coherent picture of the world that actually makes fucking sense, or even just processing everything at the same time, or processing text, or perceiving color, or just pretty much anything. Most of it is automatic, or at least not mediated by you, consciously. Is there anything in your brain that you do control then, you silly, clever mess? Yeah, let's start by you closing your eyes. Go on. Are they closed? They bloody better be. Nothing nasty is gonna come up on the Close screen. Close your eyes, anything. chat! Right? Closed? Cool. If you listen to my voice for a moment, and just try to ignore how grating and pretentious it is, if you put everything else out of your mind, all the anxieties and the neuroses, all the sensations of your body, you will find that underneath all of that is nothing but awareness. There's no obvious you on the inside. There's no tiny cat pulling levers and pressing buttons. There's no center to being conscious. It's just presence. It's just awareness. There are sensations and awareness of sensations. Bro, the and then processes, the, the probably sounds, most of them the automatic. The ocean sounds you, weird as fuck. As a thing, don't seem to have a center if you look for one. You, conscious you, do not really exist. Not concretely, to be very simple about it. That is the idea, anyway. Conscious me does not exist. Bro! No, but that's... Uh, the idea of closing your eyes um, is something a lot of people do in drug trips. Uh, like, if you read a lot about, like, herbal psychopharmacology and, and mushrooms and LSD and shit, uh, when people trip, a lot of the times, they will go into dark rooms and close their eyes because your human perception of what you're seeing and hearing and, and all this other shit kind of, like changes but when you close your eyes it's just you it's just your mind if there's no sound and there's nothing it's just your brain alone and then that's when people like freak the fuck out uh meaty for the sub easily for the fringe bits somebody told somebody told a gorilla he was gonna die and he cried but we don't know if it was out of actual fear or actual understanding i showed a clip of that on um youtube uh and it was like a meme I don't know if that's what you're referencing or if you're referencing like an actual scenario where that happened. Do you believe in God? I don't know. Go on then. Open your eyes, you scallywag. Another Wait, what was the text on screen? You often smell inexplicably of pickles? Go on then. Open your eyes, you scallywag. Another automatic process in the brain might be the system that says, I am a thing with a centered self. There is something on the inside doing the experiencing, and it is me. But maybe there isn't. Maybe there just fucking isn't. And what then? Well, insulting sign-off followed by jaunty classical music. Well, a lot of, uh, a reason a lot of people don't realize that their brain controls most of them and it's not actually them is the false perception of self with your name. A lot of people attach personality traits and all this other shit to your, like, the name that you have, but your name isn't you. Like, my name's Joe Bartolozzi, right? You guys know me as Joe, Joe Bart, fucking whatever, right? That's not me, though. Like, I was given that name at birth. That's not me. That's a conscious, like, I am a conscious being that inhabits a body that is also named Joe. When you attach all of yourself to your name, it removes kind of an understanding of the universe. It kind of, it, I'm not saying, I, don't, I hate using the word, it puts you in the matrix, but it puts you in the fucking matrix. When you're so, like, when somebody asks you, who are you? And all you say is your name, you don't understand the question. The idea of who are you and knowing yourself is much past your name. It's not even past your job, it's more past your job, your name, what you look like. All of that has nothing to do with you. It's, it's your brain and your conscious thoughts as an individual. Your perspectives on life, what you believe is you. 
having an attachment to a name and your name specifically is like removing your capability of understanding life to a degree. Whether or not, in my opinion, at least. It confuses me when I think about like a past relative I have. It's so weird knowing that, so that someone that I know uh, knows what happens at death. It confuses me. Well, they might not know what happens at death if there's nothing, but you don't know. Well, I don't know. A lot of people have their own thoughts on the afterlife and shit like that. Personally, I don't know what happens. Uh, I do say sometimes, though, uh, it does make sense to have having an afterlife makes people feel a lot better about loved ones dying. I'm not saying I don't believe in the afterlife, by the way. I'm just saying that if somebody you know dies and you can tell yourself that they're in heaven, it's not as sad as when you have that grim reality or the thought that maybe they're gone forever, right? Uh, if you believe that a part of them is still somewhere, it makes you feel a lot happier than thinking that they're gone forever. So it, people coming up with the afterlife, I'm not saying that it's not real. I don't know. I am a philosophy and religion major learning about a lot of religions that do believe in the afterlife uh, with their like solid beliefs as to why. But um, you don't know. Like, it, like it, 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 I'm not saying that they don't exist, but it makes sense to make them up because it makes you feel better about death. Do you believe in ghosts? I don't know. Joe being wise, uh, I guess. I'm scared of death because you don't, you don't know what exactly awaits you. Well, that's why when you die in a dream, you wake up, and that's why you're, that's why the the scent of ammonia is uh awakening. That's why people smell ammonia uh when they weight lift. And when they're about to, like, fight or do whatever. Because uh, it's the chemical that your body releases when you're dying. It's terrifying. So it wakes you up. All right. Wait. Oh, the video's still Hang going. a second. Look, even if you are kind of a lie, which you might be. Have you ever heard of ego death? Yes. Me too. You are still self-aware, whatever happens. And that is... Are you funny. asking me my... Sorry. Are you asking me my thoughts on ego death? Or are you just asking me... If I've heard of them. Is ammonia smelling salts? Yes. Unique. We don't know how self-aware other animals are. Almost no animals recognize their reflection for some reason. Except maybe some of the great apes. Possibly dolphins, elephants, and magpies for some reason. But yeah, why a bird? Why Matt? Have you guys ever thought about that? Whenever I look at this shit, like there's, like, if you look at animals that recognize themselves, they're so different from other animals. Apes, elephants, dolphins. They're their own thing in, like, their own realm of, of the land, right? But with a bird, like, why is a magpie capable of knowing themselves, but every other bird that looks exactly fucking like them can't? Some of the great apes, possibly dolphins, elephants, and magpies for some reason. But a bigger question is if there are other species in the universe, and there probably are, and if they've been around a while, and they probably have, are they self-aware? We always seem to make out that advanced aliens will have gone down similar lines to us, starting as cells, going up and up, building fast food joints, smoking doobies, etc. But would they- But they might not be self-aware. A highly intelligent alien could still be just geared for survival. If you- I'm not- I don't want to bring up The Thing again, because my chat shits on me when I bring up the movie The Thing. But if you've ever watched the movie The Thing, the idea- of the thing is that it's a, okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm bringing up the thing. If you've watched the thing, the idea is that it's an alien that kills you, gathers your knowledge, gathers your memories, and then makes a copy of you. So you're dead, but it makes a copy of you that is itself, but it looks like you and it has the memories of you, blah, blah, blah. Right. It is incapable of knowing itself. It's almost a parasite. It's a highly intelligent alien that can make uh, spaceships and copy people and have them act like people. But it can't, it can't fucking grasp that it exists. It doesn't have self-consciousness. It doesn't have moral theory. It's so weird that an alien could theoretically be super intelligent, but not even know that it exists be self-aware necessarily it's a clone without self-recognition 
Tonball for the 300 bits. I feel like the chance of even having a consciousness is so rare that even if death results in nothing, then eventually my consciousness will eventually come back, whether or not it would be thousands of years in the future. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's my idea. What do you mean? Like, you think your consciousness will return thousands of years from now? Why? Why? Why do you think that? Like, maybe evolution acts... Rick and Morty reference? No, Rick and Morty references other movies. It's not a Rick and Morty reference. ...made some higher mammals on Earth self-aware because it's better for problem solving or something in this one case. Maybe it was just one of those weird drunken experiments... You should do a mod and VIP tier list? No. ...nature undertakes sometimes, like platypuses or Winchester. Maybe we just got really lucky. This might be a one-time trick in the universe, and we got to take it for a test drive. And that really gets one thinking, because what we need is a global holiday. And we'll call it Being Alive is Fucking Cool Day, where everyone gets the day off, and just for a bit, even for a few hours, takes the time to remember that everyone you meet, however shit, is kind of a miracle in plain sight. And on global- Bro, that would be a great holiday. I'm alive day. What would we make the date of that holiday? I'm alive. That's just the name of the holiday. We're living. Hooray. I'm I'm a, I'm actually alive. 420, that would be a good day. That would be a good day. April 20th. It, January 1st? No, that's literally just New Year's. That's already a holiday. That's fucking stupid. Why would it be New Year's? No, but it is uh having a better outlook on life is understanding that other people are as cognizant as yourself. It makes you treat people better. Uh, I kind of had that early, or I had that recognition entirely. Like, not recently, but like, I don't know, like maybe a year ago. Uh, just the idea that like everyone is a conscious, I mean, you all, everybody already knows just like obviously that everybody is a fucking being, but it, you don't really grasp it in its entirety. The best way you can do that is imagine your brain as a universe. Imagine your consciousness as a universe and then realize that every other person alive has their own universe. Every other person. That's insane. That's like actually insane. And uh, peace for the sub. Well, being alive is fucking cool day. We'll all eat donuts and take leisurely strolls in the park and be cool to everyone. And around three o'clock, solemnly put our hands on our hearts and pledge the following. That as the sperm that won the race, as the mud that woke up, as a blob of carbon currently taking the shape of a human, I do declare that the world is fucking cool and being self-aware is fucking cool. And I shall henceforth hold doors open for people and fill pints right up to the top with only minimal foam and endeavor not to be a knob unless it's absolutely- Dude, it literally makes you be a better person. Realizing that other people are fucking alive. Like, actually serious. Like, 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 not even like, oh, just like, yeah, you're living. But like, actually grasping that somebody else is fucking alive. Tonbo for the 300 bits. I guess what I'm thinking is that consciousness is rare, and in the future there will be another person that will return back to the consciousness that I hold in this life form. It's hard for me to explain. Well, yeah, a lot of, a lot of deep philosophical beliefs are hard to explain. That hot potato for the sub. I kind of get what you mean, that, like, another being would kind of pick up your own consciousness over time, and then you would kind of poof back into existence. Absolutely necessary. And I do hereby furthermore declare that getting bored in a universe this weird is unacceptable. And if that happens, I should probably take up the tuba or organize a water fight. We shall have bad days, yes? We shall have good days, yes? All the while remembering that- There's no proof that everybody is consciousness only- uh, or is conscious only that you are. Yeah. You can't get somebody else to prove that you're conscious. It's also kind of crazy to think that there probably are humans that I would deem as not conscious. Like, you know, dude, there's set, there's eight. F, I didn't get the fucking bug. When you think about it, there's eight billion people on the world, in the world. I, I'm not trying to be a dick when I say that there are NPCs in the world, but there are NPCs in the world. There are people that are 40, 50 years old, that have walked this earth, that have never thought about their own existence, that have never thought about their own death, that have never thought about morality or life or anything. There are, you're one of them. I'm literally a philosophy and religion major, you fucking dumbass. There are people that have walked this planet. How though? They just have. You have to realize that. Eight billion people in this world. There are motherfuckers that literally go every day 
and never think about life. They are NPCs. All they care about is what they're doing in that day. They live in the present moment and that's it. And they never think about anything else. They live every day. They never think about the future. They never think about the past. They live in the moment and they don't have a consciousness. They have a consciousness, but they haven't unlocked it is, is, is the better fucking thing. And, and, and the best way to explain it is think back to when you were like in second grade you were alive, you have the memories of it, but you never thought about life, you never thought about the gravity of death, you never thought about any of that. And while your brain, it, and while at that age, the reasoning of that is just your brain isn't developed, there's people that have their brains develop, but they still stay in that state. They never get out of that, oh my god, I'm just like, I'm actually a person. Like, think back to when you were in second grade. All you did, all, you didn't, you never had a, a fear or thought in the world. When you were a second grader, like when I was in second grade, I would go to class. I would fucking sit there. I would live in the present moment. That's all I did. I lived in the present moment. Uh, you would go to class. I would go home. I would fucking sit there and watch TV and do my homework and eat, play outside, go to bed, do the same fucking thing. Never thought about it. Never thought about the meaning to life. Never thought about why I'm here. Never thought about any of that shit ever. There are, and yes, that's because your brain is undeveloped. But when your brain develops, there are people that still don't do that. There are still people that only stay in that mindset and they could be like 50 years old. That's shocking to me that there are people that exist that are 50 years old and have never thought about the meaning of life. A rusty rat for the sub slacker for the sub. A giant pigeon for the three bets. Kind of a side note. If you could travel to your lowest moment, what would you tell yourself? Five years from now, it'll be fine. That's what I always think about. If something shitty happens in your life, no matter how shitty, it'll probably be okay in five years. Unless you die in five years, that would be the only thing. But like, like say, say like, oh, somebody dies in your family or some shit happens. Five years from now, it, it'll be fine. Uh, what if heaven is when you go to a place that is your own personal heaven? When you go to hell, it's just darkness for eternity. That's literally what like the idea of Christianity is. Or some people's ideas of Christianity's heaven and hell. Uh, Mason for the 600 bets. Sorry I was in class. Sorry for being late. Glad to be here. You're chilling. You don't have to come on time. You can show up whenever you want. What do you think would happen to a person that knew everything that's happening has happened and will happen? Do you think they would go insane? So they know everything that's going to happen. They can see the future. Would they go insane? No. Most things in the universe don't even have fucking days at all. Maybe e briefly, but eventually you would come to terms with it. Even if it's all a facade. Who the fuck is Jerry, Crucible? Holy fuck. There's something on the inside that knows it's a thing. And that is the cat's pajamas. That is the veritable lobster's bottom. Oh, and there'll be hats and free beer. And Who is Jerry? Why do you keep saying Jerry? That's filth. Oh my god. Why are you saying it? Why are you saying fucking Jerry? That is not filth. He's not even in stream. Easily for the 300 bets. When I want to think about it, I would, I would like after I die, I think about what it was like before I was born for billion of, billions of years. I was just carbon. Yeah, billions of years you were just carbon. And like, it was like that. You were just carbon for billions of years. And then at a snap of a finger, you're alive. And now time's going slow. And then when you die, it's just gone again forever. Or maybe for billions of years until you're alive again, somehow. Bouncy castles. And I will see you there, carbon units. Rissavapur. Biob. No good for all. All right, time for the next video. Asking hunter gatherers life's toughest questions. Hold up, should I scan this video? Okay, we're good. The Hedzabe are a small tribe of hunter gatherers living by Lake Ayasi in Tanzania. They are some of the last true hunter-gatherers left on planet Earth and are under threat of disappearing. There are only about 1,500 left. About two months ago... Their outlook on life has to be so fucking different from ours. They have no technology. Like, imagine, imagine you just dropped everything and just started living on the land. 
Imagine you just dropped everything, moved to like the middle of nowhere, a deserted island, and hunted for your food. Lived in a lived in literally a hut, had to sleep by a fire if it was cold. Like you have no technology. You're just back. You're you're almost at the same grounds of like how animals have to live. Like you're fighting for survival. Like their outlook on life has to be so fascinating. I was fortunate to be able to spend 48 hours hunting with them. <laughs> Liver King, that's not what Liver King does. I hate how people try to say that Liver King lives the primal life. He doesn't. These motherfuckers live the primal life. Liver King just eats liver and lives in a mansion with seven fucking Lamborghinis. He is not living the primal life. He's a multi-fucking millionaire. He has money. The idea of living the primal life is giving up society. Going going back to primal society where you literally live with like family and friends, just base hunter gatherer-ness. If you have money, you're not living in the primal society. The idea of currency is when society like ramped up. The idea of like trade and shit like that. Having money, no. You're not you're not living in the primal life. Liver King literally has like uh, five supercars. That's not living in the primal society. This is. It was all the excitement you'd expect. Later, I returned to join them. This time in a longer 72-hour hunting trek deeper in the African bush. Holy shit, dude, look at that view. Oh my Bro. I want to live a uh, chat. Should, should I get like a mountain house? That's my goal. When I'm older, own a mountain house. I want to live on a mountain. I want to live on a mountain to have a view like this. Holy shit. During this time and right before raiding another battle. Oh, dude, they're so skinny though. Holy shit. Boon camp. I asked Sokolo, the leader of this tribe of hunter gatherers, what's the most important thing in life? Manako. Yeah, Manako. Yeah. Manako. Manako bala. Bala. Okay. I'm Manaketa. Manaketa. Mm. No, 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 <laughs> that's, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I ask, what happens after you die? The youngest hunter, Babua, joins us. Wow. Oh, does he not think about it? Do you think he thinks about death? Dude, he has to. He wants to help clarify some of Sokolo's answers, starting with the importance of hydration. I ask, what was your happiest day? Dude, it's such a simple life. Wow. It's just all about survival. He's too focused on surviving to think about death. Literally. Oh my God. Because like, well, I mean, that's another thing. Uh, a real, a, a little quick uh, history lesson with, with Joe Bart. Early humans, um, like the, or the idea of, of having fire, right? And being able to cook meat and, and process it faster enabled humans to have more free time the higher the intelligence of the animal the more free time they have because they can obtain their sustenance for a day quicker than the day's length is right and so after humans started to do that and homo sapiens started to do that they had free time so what they started doing was painting in caves and so a lot of a lot of early cave drawings are of animals and the landscape and then hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of years, but thousands of years after that, they started painting their hands and they started painting themselves and their family and like pointing to their kids and, and, and their grandparents and shit, right? 
And so it's cool to see that early art was of everything else. And then art became themselves. Then art started transitioning to the recognition that they exist rather than the things around them and the brain's perception. Their their consciousness changed to a sense of self. Little big guy for the sub. Spongy for the sub. But yeah, they don't have as much time to think about that shit. Phoenix for the sub. Now with Babua here, I ask again, what happens when you die? We bury them in a small hole. But he keeps saying you and he's only saying them. Like what happens when you die? The body goes to the sun. Wow. Oh, we don't know if they go to heaven or not. So they do think about that shit. Oh my god. Bro. Fuck. Uh, do they believe that they see their ancestors when they die after? Yeah, no I asked Sokolo, what's your greatest fear? I'm gonna be. Eh, hey, yeah. Lions. Oh my god. Imagine you. Dude, when people ask me my biggest fear, like the third thing I'd say is like sharks. Imagine your first biggest fear is lions and for a valid reason. Because they could fucking kill you in your sleep. Uh, big owl. Mm. Go, elephants? Let me. Big owl. Anakoma. Asesem. Ajanjai. Takate. After dancing with black mambas in my other video, I asked. Uh, Scarcore for the 300 bits. Joe, I'm not going to be in this stream because I want to wait for the VOD to come out so I can watch the entire thing. All right, that's fine. Uh, and thank you for the 300 bits, Scarcore. Bubba for the sub. Well, what about snakes? To me, Gabby, to me, Gabby, to me, Gabby, to me. Yete, Kuku. Want the snake bite? This is a snake bite. Yete, Bao. Do a small cutting and they put a. Wow, so this is a snake bite they use and they cut it. Yete, Kuku. Bepe, Kuku. Bye, I'm a woman. What kind of what kind of snake bit him? Fifi more kobok. Oh black mamba! Aren't those poisonous? How is he alive? Aren't those poisonous as shit? How is he alive? Fifi more. Yeah. Yeah. He got bit by a black mamba. They're the deadliest snake ever. No, they're not. Deadliest snake in the world. Oh, they're literally on the. Oh my god, they're on the top three. Highly venomous, native to sub-Saharan Africa. Dude, how is he alive? Like, Fred, Fred ate for the sub. Yeah. Look behind them? What do you mean, look behind them? <laughs> yeah. Look behind them? It's a dog. Fifi <laughs> more. Yeah. He got bit by a black mamba. Yeah. He did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this is the mark left from a black There is fire. No shit, there's fire. You think they don't know how to make fire? They're... Damn, man, you're <laughs> lucky. They that's a fire. There's not like a forest fire. Let's say you see a pretty girl, yeah? Mm -hmm. do you, how do you... How does that work? How oh my you, god, is he asking him how he rizzes? You want to marry her. Do you... What do you have to do? <laughs> this question gets a little lost in translation. Oh, he's talking about killing a snake. I was going to say, like, how is he going to answer that? Because there's not that many people in their tribe, I would assume. How many people, like, live with them? I ask, what is their biggest struggle? Bro, literally struggling for survival. Holy shit. Dude, like the perception of life is just so different. 
a aku i aku lebih zua kam aku ya ichana kau sabu iti bi bayi ti tiada mana tato gabi. My question is not just this tribe in general. Do you think hunter gatherer tribes on Earth that still exist, if they were brought to like a city or like technology? Do you think they would want to stay or return back to being hunter gatherers? Somebody said, "How about we build a McDonald's there?" Oh my God, bro! No. What do you mean, build a McDonald's there? They're in the middle of nowhere. What the f how are they fucking running that? They would run a return. I feel like it would depend on the person in the tribe. I feel like it would literally depend. I feel like the older the older the individual, the more likely they would want to to return. Like I feel like this kid is probably like a teenager. I would say he might want to like stay in society and then he would definitely want to return. Because if you've lived your if you've lived into your adult life, like this guy's probably like 30. If you've lived into your like if, if you're like 30 years old and you've lived in a hunter gatherer society for that long, you're going to want to stay there. Uh, you're not going to want to go to like a city, but like if, if you're still like kind of aging, then you might want to somebody redeem scream as loud as I can. You're getting a short scream because my voice is slowly coming back. I'm not going to ruin it. You get one scream. Okay. Everybody lower your mics or your headset. Fuck. To it. Dude, it hurts like a bitch. Like, oh my god. Hulking for the sub Claptonian for the Thurge Bits. If you think about it, your memories are XP and they level up your consciousness. So you go out to make more memories, that's how you get outlook on the world. I have all I have said um your body grows with time. Your mind grows with experience. That's why there could be like a 25-year-old that is 10 times as intelligent, wise, and smart as a 50-year-old. Because if the 50-year-old has lived his entire life doing the same thing every day, all day, never thought about anything, never done anything, never experienced anything, they are going to be less smart and less conscious than somebody who has done more. Uh, your mind grows with experience. Your body grows with time. Both grow with time, obviously, because experience takes time. But having time does not mean you will have experience. Like, I think my consciousness, like, bro, I don't want to be, uh, like, my consciousness or my mind, I think I've grown as a being faster in these past two years than I ever have in, in, in the rest of my entire life. Because, like, social media in general is such a weird opportunity for a person to have. And that the fact that I've been given that and been able to see uh, how this job is, how to be, like, uh, a role model over time and, and just grow as a person and see other people's experiences and perspectives has grown me as an individual more uh, than I could have. Like, if I didn't do social media, I think I would have been less conscious at 20 years old as I am right now than me doing social media. Not saying social media is the only way you obtain consciousness. I'm saying, like, that's the how I've done it. Or not how I've obtained consciousness, how I've grown. Uh, but, yeah, like, two years ago, like, I don't know if I would say I was, like, conscious. Like, when I was, like, when I just graduated high school, um, I don't know. Flu, flu, flu biscuits for the sub. Even, like, my freshman year of college during COVID, like, I just stayed at home all day, every day. Like, I did the same thing every day. I was an NPC. I was a dumbass. Like, literally. What do the stars and moon mean in the night sky? Say that. It's funny. People now worry about how many followers they have, and these people worry about starving to death. Literally. I'm just saying, like, chat. I don't know. Like, my perspective on social media has changed so much. Like, when I'm done social media, I might just get rid of it. Like, say six years from now, I'm done, like, Twitch or whatever. Like, whenever I'm done, say it's a, a month from now, six years from now, a day from now. 
I might just fall off the face of the earth. Like six years from now? No, why? Like, why? Like, at that point, why keep it? Were you scared to graduate? I'm 16 in 11th grade and it terrifies me. No. I will say, though, cherish your, your non priorities. Uh, I look back at high school, which was literally like two years ago. <laughs> but, like, I had no priorities then. Like, when I was a junior and, and senior in high school, like, yeah, I had homework and, like, I started getting jobs and shit. But, like, you had no, you had no priorities. Like, you weren't forced to do anything. You had free reign on, like, anything you wanted to do in life. And now, like, I mean, I still have free reign, but it's like, I'm in college. Like, I, I have a solidified schedule. I, like, I'm kind of in a scheduled world, whereas when I was in high school, it was unscheduled, if that makes sense. Uh, and you kind of miss that to a degree. Bubba for the 300 bets. I feel like if we gave those guy proper homes and clothes and shit, they wouldn't know what to do. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you brought one, if you brought, like, somebody that's lived in a tribe their entire life to, like, a city, like, it's going to be confusing. So, like, some people might, or, like, some people in that tribe may want to say, but some probably wouldn't. Is it high school more scheduled than college? Yes. But that's also why, but I'm saying like high, like high school schedule is just easier. And then after that, you're kind of free. Whereas colleges, you kind of do it. You have to make your own schedule. Life becomes more stressful after high school. Um, and I always say, people always look back at like the good times, which is like three years ago or four years ago, whatever it is for you. Oh my God, I missed 2018 Fortnite. Oh my God, I missed my junior year. Oh my God, I missed that. It's never going to change. I've always, I've said it in a video before. I'll say it again. Right now, you're missing four years ago. Four years from now, you'll miss now. Four years from then, you'll miss then. It's never going to change. You're always going to miss the past, right? Because you're experiencing new things. Y you wish you could go back and re-experience them. That's just how life is. So, yes. So, as Lasuli says, if I'm saying your name right, appreciate every moment you have. If you go and, and hey, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Again, high school sucks for a lot of a lot of reasons. College sucks. Life sucks for a lot of reasons, right? But even when life is shitty, even when you're like, oh, damn, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. You're never going to do it again in your entire life. So cherish that experience, even if it's a shitty one, right? Even if you're going, even if you're studying for a stupid exam in high school, even if uh, it's it's prom or like some dumb shit or even in college. Like I'm in college right now. I hate, I'm, I have to do a debate in like two weeks. I don't want to fucking do it. After I get off stream, I have to go do homework. I don't want to fucking do my homework. But while I'm doing my homework and I'm bitching about doing my homework for college, keep in mind that even though it sucks, you're never going to go through it again. And so cherish that experience, even if it's bad, because it's the only life experience you will have of that ever. Uh, Tayo for the five hundred bits. Hi, Ram, Tyler, Everett, and hi, Juan. What? Oh, you're saying hi to your friends. I'll play that on TTS for you. You're welcome. Can you say hi, Ram? Hi, Tyler. Hi, Everett. Hi, Juan. I did. Ram, Tyler, Everett, Juan. Zeta. Isn't it also crazy to think that you could theoretically get up and move anywhere in the world at any time? I mean, the only thing stopping you is money. But, like, say you say you obtain enough money to move, you could go anywhere. You could literally, like, I live in the United States right now. I can move to fucking France. I can move to Australia, South Korea, anywhere. It's, like, it's like insane. Yeah, cool. But you don't. I mean, like, I'm, I, like, I'm not going to move to fucking France. But, like, I'm saying I could. It's kind of crazy. Uh, Bubba for the 300 bets says, Joe, they gave me the opportunity to do calculus senior year. Should I do it? I mean, I took calc senior year. It sucks, but I mean, if you want to. Cool. 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 <laughs> After seeing them catch and eat a bat, mongoose, and a horn. A bat? How the fuck did they catch a bat? How do you catch a bat? A net? Do you go to college or do you do online? I do half and half. 
Um, that's my advice for college as well. This is not philosophical, but it's just a little Joe Bart advice. Uh, if you're in college or you're going to go to college, um, get a job. Uh, a lot of college students don't. Um, and I think that's bad. Uh, I understand college is like a four year vacation, but it's also supposed to be a transition into life. And so if you kind of just graduate high school with no job and then go through all of college with no job and then you get your first job ever when you're fucking 23, 22, uh, you're going to be ill prepared for life. Um, so if you're in college, get a job, do half your classes online, uh, do half in person, your major classes in person mainly. That's what I do. I take my major classes in person. I do my jet ends uh, online um, and it gives you more time. That's it. A lot of people ask me how I'm capable of doing like full-time college and social media because I stream like I do full-time college. Uh, I take 16 credits a semester. I stream like 23, 24 hours a week uh, or 20 to 24 hours a week, depending. Um, I post two to three times a day on TikTok, three times a week on YouTube. It's just scheduling. If you schedule your life, uh, you will be much more efficient. Uh, write down what you're going to do uh, three days in advance uh, every day. Like, I know exactly what I'm going to be doing two days from now, uh, and I check the list off. Um, and if you do that, it not only makes life less stressful, but you can categorize things better. You will not procrastinate. Uh, you will be more efficient. You'll make more money. Uh, and yeah, you'll be able to do more things. Uh, Emery for the sub. And while I don't have the college, I will say, I'm a college student. I go to college parties. Like, I go to frat parties here and there. But, like, I don't have the college experience. I don't live, like, on campus, obviously. Like, I'm not, I'm not just sitting on campus all day, every day, like other people. But, like, you don't really need that. Uh, the college experience is what you make of it. Don't sit there and think that you're required to just sit in your university's campus for four years straight with no job and do fucking nothing. Um... If you want to do that, feel free. It's your fucking life. But like I'm saying, you are sitting there and saying you're incapable of getting a job because you're in college is just fucking false. I hate when college students say that. It pisses me off. And I understand I'm a philosophy major. And when I was an exercise science major, it would have been harder. But you could still have a part-time job. Sitting there and saying that because you're a marine science major, you can't fucking work uh, is untrue. You could work three days a week, four hours of those days. You could still make $200 a week. Uh, working uh, and just getting a little bit of extra money, having life experience, having a job on record, being somewhat efficient in that regard. Um, but yeah, you want to experience, are you high? No, my, I have fucking, dude, I, I'm not high. I'm not high. Look, only one of my eyes is red. Oh my fucking God. People keep asking me if I'm fucking high. Holy shit. No. Anyways, you should enjoy your life while you're young, but keep in mind that the success you achieve, don't stress yourself out, by the way. Don't stress yourself out if you don't achieve certain things when you're young. But the successes you achieve when you're young will transfer exponentially to when you're older, especially in money making. Making money when you're 20 is way more valuable than making money when you're 40 because uh, you have more years to use that. Uh, Carter for the three. How many classes do you have in college? How many should I take? I take four four credit classes a semester. Some college some colleges teach three credit classes, so people will take five or six. Uh, I have taken five classes uh, a semester in the past. I take four now, which is sixteen credits, uh, which is what a full time student would be. Um, my friend is sixteen and doesn't have her learner's permit. Is that bad? No. Like, have, not having your license or, or your, or whatever, like, isn't that big of a deal. I mean, you should get a license, but it's not, like, a requirement to be successful in life. Uh, and again, you don't need to get a job in college. You don't need to force yourself to do things you don't want to do. But um, trying to manage your time as good as you can and schedule your life as best as, as, best as you can and just be as efficient as possible will make you a, a more successful person, even if it's not in the job world. Even if it's just making friends, uh, college, uh, class, life, whatever. I asked them if there's Being any... Being scheduled is the best thing you could possibly do. Warlord for the 470 bits. Then will they don't eat? They'll eat an elephant? Oh my god. Do you think elephant tastes good? Dude, I feel like it's just fat. 
I feel like an elephant is just fat. I feel like an elephant is probably gross as shit. Oh, their dogs are so cute. <laughs> Elephant's battle lasts you weeks? Elephant will last you a month. Are you kidding me? More. Cats are better than dogs? Okay, in survival standpoints, cats are fucking useless. Small cats are, like, unless you're in Minecraft protecting yourself from a creeper, dogs are more useful than cats in every fucking way. For, like, if, if this tribe had a cat, what the fuck is that cat doing for them? Literally nothing. Other than eating mice, nothing. They eat mice, I don't think they have a mice problem. I don't think they have a mice pro problem in Sub-Saharan Africa, okay? I, I don't think they're, I don't think they're bugging about that. <laughs> Warlord for the 1,050 bits. Damn. Thank you for the 1,050 bits. And flu for the 600 bits says, I'm going to murder an orange. Why? An orange would be pretty good right now, though. So, so like chat, what, are, what is better, dogs or cats? Dogs. Like, I, I, I have recently given up my hatred for cats. I don't hate cats anymore. But dogs will always be better. Uh, I may, like, I, would, I wouldn't be opposed to owning a, like, a nice cat. But I would, n nine, nine times out of ten, I would want a dog. Dogs are, are almost always better. Uh, cats are easier to take care of. That is true. They're less work. But, like, dogs are cooler. Well, I guess only and useful. Hyenas are off the menu. I ask if there's anything else, which again is lost in translation. People are typing dogs and there's a BTTV emote that's dogs, and now it's just showing dogs dancing. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, there are mice! Oh, there are mice! Oh, there literally are mice! Oh my god! Oh, they actually have mice. Bro, maybe they need a cat. Wait, no, they would probably eat the mice, though. I ask if, if there's the cat ate the mice, then the cat's just taking the food. Else, which again is lost in translation. <laughs> What do you think of city food? City food don't taste good? Bro, come on. Oh my god. Bro, they haven't had a Big Mac. <laughs> they, somebody get this man a Big Mac. Somebody get this man a somebody get this man a 10 piece nugget meal. For the love of God, uh, <laughs> yeah, that shit would, yeah, get that man a spicy chicken sandwich. That would be good as shit. Somebody redeem scream again? Refund that. I'm not doing it again. I'm going to lose my voice. I'll do, it, I'll, I'll do it once until my voice is back. Three Racha, um, Omaris for the sub, Warlord for the 1,050 bits. Uh, again, the 1,050 bits. By far my favorite Twitch streamer, bro. Love your content. Thank you. Little philosophy stream today. A bit different from my regular content, but uh, thank you, Warlord. Uh, and General. For the 300 bits. Going back to extraterrestrial life, what are your thoughts on Oumamua, a spaceship discovery? It's okay if you don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. What is that? Is that like a, a like a, a certified thing? Like that that was like a spaceship that was discovered or something? Um. Also, fuck. What was I gonna say? <sighs> we were talking about McDonald's. I don't remember. <laughs> They don't like it. They actually might not like that though, because it is very processed. Like if they ate a spicy chicken sandwich, they might hate that shit. What? What? They don't, they don't trust it. The tribe has about 15 dogs that help them hunt. So I asked them, "What do dogs mean to you?" Fifteen dogs. Mm -hmm. 
Cotton Hock to claw a net a power. But me, I've got a claw. The cocoa could to lipa is a punat. Okay, so to us, so she has dude. Also, just the, the idea of people speaking other languages is just fascinating to me. That, like, uh, like, not even, not even like with tribal language, but warped for the 10 gifted subs. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs, Warp. Warp did. Oh my god, I was fucking up your name the other day. Warp, Warp, Warp E did? Warp did. Warp did. Is that how you say it? Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Oh my god, thank Warp if you got a sub. Holy shit. Uh. Thank you for the 10 gifted. Already at the sub goal today. Massive dub. Tokel for the 300 bits. Give them a warhead. They've already done, we've already watched the video of that. I think they actually did that with this tribe. Uh, but yeah, thank you for the 10 gifted. Oh my god. Uh, thank them if you got a sub. How do bits work? I'm considering giving you 500 bits for Christmas. Um, a bit, you buy a, you buy bits in bundle on like Twitch's website or your phone. And then you can send increments on, um, what's it called? Uh, in a message. And then they'll show up. Uh, my minimum TTS is 300 bits. Um, not for me to be a dick. It's just because if it was last, people would spam. Uh, Bubba for the three hundred bits. What is a bush pig? Uh, I would assume a pig that lives in a bush. Have you ever played lacrosse? Uh, I've played a game of lacrosse. I do not know how to play lacrosse well. And Warlords for the sub. <laughs> oh, what do bits give you? Money. I get one penny per bit. 500 bits, 300 bits is $3. Hey, but me, uh... <laughs> so cool, man. Thank you. What the ball? About an hour later, myself and seven Hadzabe oh, hunters. Shit, you're so fucking loud. Hunters raided the baboon camp that was next to ours. It was insanity. Oh my god, he got it! This is crazy, man. This is crazy, man. And it's coming up next week on the channel. <laughs> Oh my god! If you've missed the first episode, make sure to go watch it. Bro, the dog's licking its ear! <laughs> Holy shit, we had to watch that. Yo, do you guys want to watch that for a regular React video one day? I have that queued. I literally have that video queued. The last tribe that... Hu Wait, where is it? 72 hours with Africa's last monkey-eating tribe. Like, I literally have that video. Uh, I feel like we watched that on Friday. Are y'all down to watch that on Friday? Wait, this guy might be... This guy might actually have a different video of it. Oh, he probably has a different video of it. Holy shit, hold up. Oh, he definitely has a different video of it, because the other one's new. Catching baboons with the Hadza people. Oh, this is a different video of it. Some could argue. I'll cue both, and then I'll just see which one's this better. Video destroys their culture. No way eating a monkey is good. Why would that not be good? It's just an animal. All right. Uh, next video. Becoming who you really are. The Philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche. This video is sponsored by the book summary service, Blinkist. The Ugh, first 100 people- Cringe. Cringe. I don't care. I don't care. I only watch Joe Bartolosi ads on YouTube. I skip every other ad. Turn history, having both predicted the cause and con- Bro, you hit 1M followers on what? If you're talking about Twitch, I've been on it for a bit. Twitch was the last social media that I hit a million on. Or the most recent one. Consequence and going on to provide grandiose. Would you need a frog? Oh, definitely. Evolutionary ideas as possible solutions. Friedrich Nietzsche is one of the most influential and significant thinkers of modern history. The particular. What about Instagram? I don't. I don't focus on. I like. In all honesty, I don't care how many followers I have on Instagram, uh, or fucking subscribers on Snapchat. I haven't posted on my creator Snapchat uh, in fucking nine months, ten months. I haven't posted on I haven't posted on that shit in forever. I don't even use Snapchat anymore. Um 
the the last time I used that shit was for the NNN group chat. Uh, and then before that, it was like nine months prior. Um, and then for Instagram, uh, I don't even post. Like, I barely post on that shit. I, I post on it, um, like, especially, like, stories and shit. I don't, I don't, here's my thing. I don't use Snapchat, because what is the purpose of Snapchat? Stories. I just post Instagram stories. So I have a, I have a Snapchat, but I don't fucking use it, because there's no need for me to use it. What is NNN? No, not November. It was like a TikTok group chat. Um, streaks? Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not fucking 10 years old. I haven't, I haven't done Snapchat streaks in forever. Um, I don't use Snapchat uh, just because, like, the only purpose for me is stories. Because I don't need it for communication. So if I'm not using it for stories, I just I just use my, my fucking Instagram stories. Because it's the same fucking thing. And there's actually more capability on Instagram stories than there is on Snapchat stories. Because I can do polls and shit. So, like, literally on Instagram, I had a poll. Like, today on Instagram, I posted a fucking poll. I said, when is it okay to start listening to Christmas music? Like that, I would not be able to, I would not be able to post that on Snapchat. So like, I just post on Instagram stories. Fuck Snapchat. Snapchat's useless. I never use that shit. Um, but, um, I don't really care how many followers I have on that. Cause the best way I can describe it is creators go one of two routes. They either go the TikTok, YouTube, Twitch route, which is what I went, or they go the TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat route. Uh, while I have all those social medias, most creators have those social medias, I only focus on those three, right? Like, I focus on Instagram, or not Instagram, I focus on Twitch, YouTube, uh, and TikTok, whereas other people focus on Instagram, Snapchat, and all that other shit. Ugh. Um, Pop Sosa for the three bit or for the three just got banned on Discord server for saying the R slur when I didn't say anything. Uh, please reach out to my Discord mods. Uh, they will be able to go over your uh mod mess or your messages. Uh, I cannot do that. Do you have a Discord? Oh yeah, but that doesn't. Does Discord count as social media? Like, does Discord count as social media? No. I have a Discord, exclamation point Discord. I use it for video suggestions if you want to send videos for me to watch. Um, but I don't use, yeah, no. I would not say Discord. Discord does not count as a social media. It is It is a, like, server. I, I, what does Discord count as? It's just like a party server. It's like a, I, I mean, it's like a, not a messaging service because it's not really a messaging service. Like, you use Discord for, like, gaming calls. It's like a gaming app. Uh, Carter for the three. What do you think that vegan teacher would say about the tribes? I don't know. Uh, cause they can't be vegan. So I don't know what you would say. The crossroads that Nietzsche stands at is one where the primary path of Western religious faith began to crumble and cave in, leaving a massive empty crater at the end of life's suffering and what would seem like only one alternative path Holy towards shit. that of pessimism and nihilism. His life's work would undertake this newly emerging issue and attempt to forge a new third path away from both religious faith and nihilism and towards new wow this is why i love nietzsche by the way nietzsche when people ask me my favorite philosopher i say nietzsche uh but he like in the philosophy world people have their favorite philosophers and shit on each other for like which ones they don't like uh i the most books i have are nietzsche's i've only read like a few um but i gotta read more of them i bought like a fucking pack of like six of his books <gasps> You're fucking kidding me. Warped it for the 50 fucking gifted subs. What the fuck? Oh my god. Dub in the fucking chat. Dude. How many subs... Did they type anything? I'm looking up your user. I'm looking up your user. I didn't even know. I... Uh, warp. It's called Warp Dead. Okay, so I'm saying it right. Dude, the 50 fucking gifted subs. Holy shit. Dubs in the chat. Thank Warp Dead if you got a fucking sub because they just gave fucking 50 subs to people. Zav for the sub. Oh my god.
How do I know if I got a gifted? It would tell you. How many? How much is that? That's like two hundred fifty dollars in subs. Oh my god. The fucking fifty gifteds. Holy shit! Dub in the chat for Warped. Thank you. Actually, thank you for the fifty gifted subs. I'm new to Twitch. LMAO. Um. Oh my god, yeah, you are. And you've been following me very recently. Bro, you've been following me for four days. And you've gifted 50 subs. More than 50 subs. Holy shit. Well, you're welcome to the stream all the time. Um, If you have any questions about Twitch, I just got my paycheck LMAO. You didn't need to give me part of your paycheck or your paycheck. Now I feel terrible. Please, thank you for the 50 gifteds, but for the future, you don't you don't have to feel required to gift subs. You're you're welcome to gift subs obviously. I'm not going to deny subs, but <laughs> I mean, you don't have to gift them. Uh you uh, that is actually so many subs. That is more subs than uh, most people in my channel ever give. Holy shit. 50 fucking gifteds. Wow. Thank you. Actually, thank you for the subs. Zav for the sub. I already read that. I'm a dumbass. I came from YouTube. I want to support. Uh, well, I'm glad that you came from YouTube. I'm glad that my YouTube has brought over some uh, some viewers. Uh, and I'm glad that you like my YouTube videos. And now my Twitch. Uh, and thank you for the support. Uh, and thank you for the free subs for my chat, as well as uh, the subs towards me. Cooking for the sub and mommy biddies for the sub. Uh, but yeah, once again, thank you for the 50 gifteds. That is actually insane. Meaning and human values. Nietzsche was born in 1844 in Saxony, Prussia, which is now part of Eastern Germany. He was born to a modest family, living an ordinary, sheltered early child. Bro, y'all ever see old age pictures of people? I will stare at pictures from, like, wait, pictures of people from the 1800s. Looking at pictures from the 1800s is just fucking fascinating. Like, oh my god, they all look so, they all look so sad. Why are they all so sad? Like, what is this picture? Look at this. What the fuck is this? Like, uh, they don't look, they don't look at all happy. They all look so sad. And it's just like, dude, even regular pictures. It's just like, also, go to your grandparents, if your grandparents are still alive. Ask them to see a picture of their grandparents. Also, weird shit here. Uh, what they used to do. They used to take pictures. I can't even show that. Uh, if you look up pictures from the 1800s, a lot of pictures will be of dead people. Because uh, they used to take pictures with dead people. Uh, which is just very odd to me. Um, but like even old... Wait. Like even this. Like this picture. Look at this. Like these people were alive 200 years ago. Wow. And they all look sad. It's so sick. It's so scary. They had straight phases because it was the trend for pictures. Yeah, and pictures took an insane amount of time to take, so they usually didn't want to keep a smile. But even then, like, life just looks so gloomy. And even in higher quality pictures, like, this one's high quality. Like, these women look like, like, I don't know. They just look so sad. She's not even staring at the right fucking direction. It's just somebody help, somebody help this woman out for the love of fucking God. She's, she's staring at the wrong fucking, where is she staring? What do they, what do they got, an iPhone or some shit? There's one fucking photograph. These two are staring in the wrong fucking way. Holy shit. This ain't the iPhone era. That's the worst, by the way. When you're trying to take a picture and four people are taking a picture of you at once. And you don't know which one to look at. And then in the picture, everybody's looking at a different camera. That sucks. Fire for the sub. Brug for the sub. Fuchs for the sub. Or Fuchs. Fuchs. That's probably how you say it. Fuchs for the sub. Hold on, let me see if Warp said anything else. Okay, no, they didn't. I want to support. Thank you. Childhood. His father, Karl Ludwig Nietzsche, was the town's Lutheran pastor, which would immediately immerse young Nietzsche into the Christian faith. However, simultaneous to being introduced to it. Oh, that's crazy. He grew up as a Christian, and he wrote a he wrote a book called God Doesn't. Like, wait, the book that I read of him is God is God is Dead by Friedrich Nietzsche. Dude, he grew up in a Christian household. He wrote a book called God is Dead, and it just shits on Christianity. 
It literally is just his whole book of just explaining why he thinks Christianity is wrong. Kool-Aid for the sub. That's insane. It would soon be challenged and tested as his father, the same man who practiced and preached of God, was diagnosed with a terminal brain disease. For a year, his father suffered horribly and then died at the young age of just 35. Thirty-five? man who practiced and preached of God was diagnosed with a terminal brain disease. For a year, his father suffered horribly and then died at the young age of just 35. And the following year, Nietzsche's younger brother, Ludwig, also died. This dichotomy of his... Oh my God! Young for the sub. I didn't even know about his life. Holy shit. Religious foundation and early exposure to the irreconcilable, reasonless pain and suffering experienced by good, undeserving people would likely lay some of the groundwork. Oh, for that's all he writes about. In that book, a little quick assumption, he like he writes about like the scripture and all that. Like he'll go into the religion, but like he'll write about like why would a why would like a God that cares about its people like just basically kill everybody that doesn't deserve it. Uh, general for the three jibets. Uh, hey Joe, W warped lord, uh, warped did. Uh, overlapped my bits, but, oh shit, sorry I didn't see that, uh, if I missed your bits. Oh, Oyamumwa, dude, I don't know how to say that, is a space discovery that looks like a spaceship, and it changes direction and speed rapidly, let nothing like ever's di uh, discovered. Pictures look weird on Google. Dude, I think I've heard of that. Oh, Mua, oh, Mua, Mua, oh, Mua, Mua, oh, Mua, Mua. Why is it called that? What the fuck? Oh, no, not this. Not this. This isn't a spaceship. Um, I've, I've read, <laughs> chat, do you think, this looks like a rock. D is this a spaceship, chat? I don't think that's a spaceship. I thought you were talking about the government, like, f uh, filming, uh, the spaceship in the sky that NASA and the U.S. government actually declassified as, like, we don't know what the fuck this is. It moved rapidly. It's terrifying. That, I was like, oh, my God, that's a UFO. This, this just looks like a rock. This looks like a rock. I mean, it might not. Maybe it's a spaceship disguised as a rock. We never know. But, like, that's interstellar object detected passing through the solar system. See, but, like, is it is it a fucking UFO? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. It's a very long rock, yes. Hold in for the sub. ...would ultimately become the basis of Nietzsche's later work. Following a fairly somber, serious, and lonely childhood, Nietzsche would go on to study theology at the University of Bonn. Both in early schooling and university, he would show strong intellectual promise, excelling especially well in Christian theology. However, following just one semester at university, as he became increasingly critical and intellectually sharp, and after being exposed to various critiques of Christianity, Nietzsche would have no choice but to let go of his Christian faith, fully shedding the skin of his innocence and blind devotion. From here, he would go on to study philology, the study of the history of language, at the University of Leipzig. Here, he would do so well that while still only in his mid-twenties, he would go on to be hired as a professor of classical philology at the University of Basel, becoming the youngest professor. Dude, imagine being a college professor at like 25. That's nuts. Warped it for the sub and Bubba for the thousand bets. My math teacher took my tech deck. What do I do? Professor to ever be hired still to this day. After only a few years. I don't know. What do you. Your math teacher took your tech deck. What do you do? Get it back? Sue her? I don't think he could sue... Ki okay, kill them is not the answer. Okay. Okay, shoot up the school? No. Fight? No. Okay, never mind. Don't ask my chat. Don't ask my chat for advice. Don't ask my chat for advice ever. Holy shit. Holy shit, they're all just saying kill, kill everybody. No. It's a fucking tech deck. Years of teaching, though. Nietzsche would leave his position partly because of his growing dissatisfaction and sense of That mustache, though? Strange within academia, and partly because of his growing poor health, which he had- Plop for the five fucking gifted! Plops, plobs, plobs? It's plops, plobs. Thank you for the five gifted subs! Massive dub, plobs G07. Thank you for the five gifties. 
accumulated by a combination of genetic ailments and what is believed to have been a case of syphilis that he contracted at a brothel. Rough. From here, Ooh, buddy got syphilis at a brothel. <laughs> Yikes! Yikes! Massive f in the chat. Buddy got syphilis. <laughs> he would go on to live a fairly isolated life, traveling around Europe, moving to and from different climates most suitable for his poor health, and living off his small university pension. He would live primarily and most notably in the Swiss Alps, where he would spend the majority of his remaining sane life. Throughout this time, in between spells of being bedridden by his ailments, a devastating failed love ordeal, degrading friendships and family relations, and depressive and nihilistic states, Nietzsche would spend most of his time walking, thinking, and writing, finding solace, meaning, and reason to continue through his pursuit of philosophy. That is crazy! Um, dude, I feel like every... Okay, I... You guys won't know this because you're probably not a philosophy major. But whenever I learn about, like, philosophical fucking writers or just philosophers, they always move to the Alps. Every, like, every European philosopher moves to the mountains and just thinks. And, like, that's it. And then they write shit and they come back. I don't know. I think it's because, like, being alone... Have you, have you ever realized that, what, like, alone time is always when you actually reflect upon things and that's when you get smarter? Being with people is great, but having alone time is something that's kind of needed in life. And so if you're ever alone and you're sad about it, just realize that, like, you're actually kind of getting smarter when you're alone. Um, and so that's why a lot of philosophers just kind of, like, move into the middle of nowhere uh, and just think for, like, years on end. During this time, he would produce his most influential works, including Human All Too Human, The Gay Science, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Beyond Good and Evil, and On the Genealogy of Morals. I think I have literally all of those. I haven't opened it, but I have, I have a whole bookshelf of books. That's the wrong way. Boom. All of them. Dubs in the chat. Dubs in the chat, I'm going to read these one day. It might take me 10 years to read these, but I'll read these one day, chat. On God. Hold on. Dude, I'm not even lying. I bought, like, this past summer, I bought probably, like, $400 in books. I read, like, two of them out of, like, the 20. But, I mean, I'm, like, I'm, I wasn't upset that I didn't read all of them, obviously, just because I'll read them eventually. It's not, like, a trend book. It's not like I'm reading, like, The Hunger Games. In these works... You ain't gonna read one of them? I've already read some of them. Not those specifically. Nietzsche would label... Stream is so lame. Who knows how to read this stream is so lame? Then leave. We get it. You don't want to get smarter. It's okay. You can stay... You can stay... You can stay just, like, satisfied with, like, not knowing anything in life. You know, it's fine. L chatter, leave the stream. Both the groundwork and early construction. Like, dude, I, you got, you got to realize, like, yeah, I get it. My philosophy streams don't average as many viewers as my regular react days. Who would have guessed? Not everybody does it. Not everybody wants to learn things. That's on them. If they don't want to be here, who the fuck cares? We're just conversing about shit. If you don't want to be here, leave. You're, you don't have to be here. You're welcome to be here, but don't fucking bitch. New sort of philosophy. A philosophy that would essentially loosen the bolts of all contemporary certainties, all notions of good and evil. Are you an atheist? No. I'm agnostic. Uh, but most Americans, um, sadly don't understand. It's mainly older people. If you say you're agnostic, most people take that as atheist, uh, which is just untrue. Uh, an atheist does not believe in God or a God. They're, they're not a theist. Uh, an agnostic could still be a theist. I'm, agno I'm an agnostic theist. I believe in something. I don't know what. Um, but I'm not tied to any religion. I was baptized Catholic. I am not a Catholic. Uh, easily for the 446 bits. I fucking love the philosophy stream, so here's the rest of my best to show support. Screw that chatter. Uh, thank you for the 446 bits. Um, and thank you for the support. The eye has gotten worse. Does it look worse? Stop. Does it look worse than the start of the stream? I think it looks the same. 
Dude, chat, it looks the same. Stop. All knowledge of true and false, right and wrong. God is dead. God remains dead, and we have killed him. That's the name of the book that I read. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives. Is not the greatness of this deed too great? So you believe something without knowing what it is. Well, to be fair, everybody believes something without full grasp of what it is. Even if you are, like, a Christian or um, Hindu or whatever, like, you believe in the specific god or gods that you may believe in, but you still don't grasp it fully. Humans cannot grasp immortality. Humans cannot grasp indefinite being. It's impossible. You're limited by your human perception. So even if you believe in a specific god, you don't actually understand fully what that means. Um, it's not, I'm not dissing on the belief. I at myself at one point was a Christian. I still believe in something. But what I'm saying is, is like, even if you believe in a specific god, you still don't, you can't, you can't think of what that god would look like unless you're thinking about Jesus or like a prophet of some sorts. Um, because y you don't understand it. You don't know what they would, you don't know what a meta being would be like. Um, so me saying I'm an agnostic theist, I believe in something like you could diss that, but at the end of the day, most people don't know what their God would be like. Right. Uh, general for the 300 bits. My capital one account is going crazy from spending bits. This will be my last bits. Maybe ever, dude, you don't need to give bits. Thank you for all the bits. You don't have to give any more. I genuinely have never enjoyed an influencer more. I hope your life is successful and you get the most out of it. Sorry if this is super long. From your undying loyal viewer, Charlie, a.k.a. General Zoid 241 Dude, you can just chat and, and, and fucking watch the stream. You don't have to give bits. Uh, uh, but thank you for all the bits and the nice message. Uh, Pug for the raid of two. W raid on God. The two viewer raid from Pug. Great for us. Must we ourselves not become gods simply to appear worthy of it? This is perhaps one of Nietzsche's most quoted and... In Somebody said bro thinks he's smart. Uh, w Chatter, join Islam, brother Joseph, bro thinks he's smart. I don't think I'm smart. But how are you going to come in my stream, tell me I'm lame, and then tell me I don't know anything? And then tell me, like, you realize, like, spreading your religion, you shouldn't call people stupid. Like, that just doesn't make sense. Right? Like, you're being a dick. Like, why are you being a dick? Like, uh... Uh, like, I've looked into Islam. I actually do think Islam is a great religion. Um, I've learned about it um, in high school, in philosophy class, and I am learning about it uh, next semester more, actually. But, um, like, uh, like, why are you coming into my stream and just, like, like telling me my stream is lame and I'm, I think I'm smart? I never said I was smart. Uh, warp! Warped it for the 10 gifteds! Holy shit! Thank you for the fucking 10 gifted subs! Damn! Clap it up. Clap it up. Thank you for the 10 gifteds. Warped it for the 10 gifted subs. Thank you for the subs. Thank them if you got a sub. Holy shit. Warped it. You don't need to give any more subs. Oh my god. You don't need to give any more subs. I, I thank you for the subs, but you don't need to give any more subs. Oh my god. That is literally like, what, 70 subs today? Holy shit. My god. MTG for the 301 bits. Uh, the kid that was shitting on me said smartest New Jersey resident. I thank you for that. I feel, I still feel as if that's an insult though. You're saying New Jersey people are stupid, but as long as I am the smartest of the New Jerseyans, I am happy. Uh, <laughs> warped it for the 10 gifted, empty, uh, empty goaded for the 301 bits. Hit a PR of 200. Can you say you're proud? I'm proud of you. Congratulations. You'll keep hitting new milestones. Important passages. It is in this line. God is dead that we find not Nietzsche's celebration of humanity's lost faith, but his stark, intense concern of warning for what it meant. The collapse of Christian faith brought with it, in Nietzsche's mind, the collapse of everything built on it. The whole of European- Bro, is he gonna go over this man's life, or is he going to, oh, he's actually just going over all of Friedrich Nietzsche's, Nietzsche's life. Morality, it's rational- Do y'all like this video, yes or no? Else ...and its value. I mean, I'm vibing with it, but if y'all wanna change, I'll change. He both predicted and feared that with this collective revelation, without sufficient... Okay, most people are saying yes. Uh, why aren't you Christian anymore? Genuinely curious. Um, 
Fuck. Do you guys actually want to know why I'm not Christian anymore? Like, just a general rundown? I've talked about it before. Um... I don't agree with a lot of the teachings. Uh, I went to a Catholic high school. Um, we would read scripture. I took theology for four years. Uh, I took intro to theology. I took sacred scriptures, morality and sacraments, and world religion. Uh, now I'm a philosophy and religion major, and I'm in a Christian class right now uh, of church and state in America. Um... I don't have anything against Christianity. It's more so my interpretations of the Bible when I read them in Scripture versus what the priests uh, adamantly claimed uh, were, the, were the teachings and how I was wrong in my interpretation um, just strayed me away. Um, like, I would read something, I would interpret it some way, and they would say I was wrong and that this is what it meant. But at the end of the day, how are they to tell me what it meant? You know what I mean? Like, we're both reading the same book. I understand they're more qualified than I am in every way. Uh, and they've spent their entire lives doing it. But it just, it upset me that, like, my opinion and my interpretation of it was completely disregarded to the factor that, like, I was just wrong, even though it was just an interpretation. Um, and I understand they studied it for longer, but it's more so just, like, I... Even if they studied it for longer and they're telling me I'm wrong and that's fine. If I'm wrong and, and if, if I'm wrong of my interpretation, then I just disagree with that statement. You know what I mean? Like I interpret it one way. They said I was wrong. That's fine. Then I just disagree with that. I disagree with that section of Christianity. You know what I mean? Um, I There's a lot of things uh, with like uh homosexuality while christianity is not against homosexuality they're against gay marriage at any acts uh because in christianity you have to be both um capable of having a child and wanting to have a child and wanting to procreate as well as be in love to have sex i don't think that is true i think gay people should be able to be married i think gay people should be able to do whatever they want um it, that's just like small, like it's like, that's just one thing. That's not I, I, the reason I like, I'm not a Christian anymore. Isn't because of that, but it's just like morality and sacraments really did it for me. My junior year, I took, okay, that's really what it is. If you want my genuine answer, the reason I'm not Christian anymore is because of morality and sacraments. I took morality and sacraments my junior year in high school. I disagreed with damn near everything they said in that fucking class. I would argue with my teacher every day. He didn't hate me. I had a 90, I had a 99 in morality and sacraments, but I disagreed with every goddamn thing they said in that book. Not, um, not, um, not almost every goddamn thing, but like a lot of things like it, it, opinions on the consciousness opinions on, on life, abortion, whatever. Like I would just argue with it. I, I, I at one point asked him, uh, like just about like different evolutions of humans and, and how like, we were going like, I, it was just a conversation. I remember of different types of humans. You know how there's homo sapiens, homo habilis, Neanderthals, all this other shit. Right. And I was like, do they go to heaven? He was like, no, they're not human. But I was like, they had consciousnesses possibly. He was like, well, even if they did, they don't, they're not homo sapien. I was like, that makes no fucking sense. I was like, just anything that he said, it just didn't make sense to me. I was like, I was like, why, why homo sapiens? And then I would, we would argue about Adam and Eve. We would argue about all this other shit. It's just like, I think that I, I have the same opinion of Christianity that the founding fathers did, that were deists. I believe Christianity as a religion is great in, in, in making people good people. I think religious people are good people a lot of the time. However, I personally don't believe with some of the teachings. Uh, I believe that, yeah, a lot of the 10 commandments and stuff like that, they have great teachings out of the Bible, but personally, I don't believe in maybe like the, the definitive, this is what it is, right? Uh, the idea of like, perfect, this is just with Catholicism specifically having to, um, profess my sins to a priest to be absolved of them. Why can't I speak directly to God? Why do I have to have some sort of control in the middle? Why does, why does a priest have to absolve me of my sins? Why can't God? Why can't God, in, why can't I individually speak to God and apologize for my sins rather than confessing my sins to a priest 
which was uh like educated on all of this and does it for me. There's a lot of reasons. I'm kind of ping-ponging all, all over the place. I think Christianity has a lot of good teachings. I think a, a lot of subsects of Christianity have good teachings. Uh like the like a lot of subsects of Protestantism or Catholicism. Uh but I just don't personally believe in it anymore. Um and so I'm agnostic. Will I ever go back to Christianity? I don't know. Um but right now I do not believe in it. Um but yeah, is that, a, is that a, it, did that make sense? Did that make, that's the Catholics beliefs. Yes, but I'm saying Christianity in whole as well. I've learned about Christianity as a whole, not just Catholicism. Um, it's just like, I've doubted a lot of it. I don't, I, it's also just like, I'll take, this is my idea. I'll take the teachings of Christianity that I like and I'll apply them to my life. I'll apply the moral theories that I believe in to my life. I have my own understanding of morality. As, as do many of you. Uh, that is Kohlberg's theory of, uh, Kohlberg's moral theory, something I'm learning about in psychology right now, in college. The idea of unlocking your own moral theory is the last stage of psychological moral development. Understanding what you as an individual believe is right and wrong, comparable to what society believes and what the rules are, is what makes you an intelligent being. And I, I don't think I'm a genius. I, I don't think I'm a genius. I don't think anybody's a genius. Um, but I'm sitting here and I just have my own beliefs of what I believe is right and wrong. And I'll take Christianity's beliefs into account. But if I disagree with it in some regards, I disagree with it in some regards. I am here to be a good person under my own values. And if that grants me heaven, if Christianity is right, then that grants me heaven. But I don't believe that I have to be Christian to obtain heaven. I don't think that in my opinion, that is required. Other people disagree with me. The priests at my, ch at my, at my high school disagreed with me. Um, and they said I would go to hell if I wasn't Christian. And that's fine. But I personally think that if I am a good person in my life and I carry out good deeds and I am a good person to be a good person, not a good person out of fear of hell, then that makes me a better person than somebody that is good in fear. If you're good to be good, you're a better person than somebody that is good to avoid punishment. And that's a fact. If you're a, if you are a good person just to be a good person, bravo. If you're a good person to avoid punishment, you're doing it for ulterior motives. I'm not saying that's Christianity, by the way. I like like I have a lot of Christian friends. I myself in when I was in the Christian religion, I I wasn't being a good person to avoid hell, but a lot of people do. A lot of people are good people because they are scared of what will happen if they are not a good person. That is not the highest level of moral theory. Being a good person just because you want to be a good person is better, in my opinion. But other people can disagree with me. That's fine. That's the idea of philosophy and religion, the idea of subjective morality, subjective beliefs. Cracker for the 300 bits. Uh, off topic, uh, I told my professor what you said about the brain not understanding death, so when we wake up all dreaming and he told me to shut the fuck up. Well, your professor's a dickhead. Steven for the 300 bits, have you heard of Ill Mind 7 by Hopson? Hopskin, do you mean? Uh, kind of how I feel about Christianity. I've never heard of that. Beer, uh, uh, beer hunter for the three hundred bits. I'm a Christian and a Catholic. Is a j just a denomination. There are a lot of others. I know. I am non-denominational. I believe what the Bible says and nothing else. Um, yeah, there's a lot of denominations of Christianity. Uh, Mormons, Seven Day Adventists, uh, Catholics, non-denominationals, Anglicans, um, Quakers. Like, there's a shitload. I only listed like a few. There's way more. Placement, humanity would be left to struggle with no clear system or meaning and devolve into widespread despair in the form of nihilism. One of Nietzsche's key ideas at the foundation of his attempt to resolve this issue Fuck! is the record. I just spilled my water. F. Ignition that there is in fact no universal objective truth to be known. There are no facts, only interpretations, he wrote. Damn! That's, that's facts, though. <laughs> that's facts, though. Is that a paradox? That's facts, though. There are no facts, only interpretations. That's facts. That is actually facts. <laughs> Bro, that has to be a paradox. I got a post on TikTok. Hold up. 
Nietzsche denied the very construct of any sort of capital T truth and suggested that all attempts to find one were woefully misguided and actually the source of disconnect preventing modern man from rediscovering any meaning in life. The Chat one or two. Chat one or two. One or two, one or two, one or two, one or two. Pick, pick, pick. One. Okay, everybody's saying one. Oh, now most people are saying two. I literally just started posting one. Okay, that's awkward. That's very awkward. We're posting one today. Yo, look at this gross ass. Look at this gross ass toe. That's the video for today. What do you think that smells like? Probably Parmesan cheese, right? That's what I was thinking. Okay, the audio is not delayed. Massive dub. Universal objectivity or meaning beyond this life took the spirit out of the... Pre you know where you're going after showing that? What do you mean? Uh, Bubba for the 300 bits. I'm a Mormon, but I don't understand what I believe in, and I feel it's hard to believe in an all-knowing power that I've never seen. Uh, well, yeah, that's the idea of, like, questioning, but that's also the idea of faith, uh, that they will say. But, uh, a little, like, quick fact, uh, 70% of Americans self-identify as Christian, uh, but, like, 5% or, like, 5 or 10% of them are actually practicing. Um, so the actual number of people that are practicing Christians that, um, like, like many Americans believe in like the Christian God, but not many actually follow the practiced religion. Uh, like very few actually, uh, a lot in the South, not a lot in the North. Present earthly human experience of meaning. The TikTok's delayed. It's delayed. Don't tell me it's delayed. Is it delayed? It's not delayed. It didn't look delayed to me. It's not delayed. What do you mean? It's not delayed. Okay, I'm going to repost it. I'm literally deleting it. I'm deleting it and I'm reposting it. Oh my god, that's probably going to fuck the views. Oh, that's probably going to fuck the views because the video is already up. Chat, you guys are screwing me over here. Chat, you guys are screwing me over here. Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys are screwing me over. I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. Oh my god. It's literally delayed. Holy fucking shit, L TikTok. Why the fuck? It is delayed while well, I'm reposting it. I'm reposting it. I'm reposting it. God damn it. L TikTok. Never mind. Not no W TikTok L TikTok. TikTok fucking blows dick. Warped for the thridge bits. Oh my god. Bro, come on. Why the fuck do they do that? I'm double checking now. All right, now it's good. Massive dub that I fixed it. But L, see, that's going to fuck the views. Because it, it, the video got uploaded, and then um, that's how it works on TikTok. Little, little quick fact. Al Per for the sub. If the video gets uploaded and people can see it and you delete it and repost, it just fucks it. Apparently subjective, independent, and expressive. Who cares? Because of this, Nietzsche would direct his attention primarily to the arts and humanities, believing that creative acts and experiences, be it things like music, philosophy, literature, theater, and so on, could be used as essential means to communicate. Cyan for the 300 bits says, uh, you get into heaven by believing in Jesus and having a relationship with him. In fact, Jesus uh, was against Christianity because Christianity in old times was about following the law and trying to be the best. You can, which is against what Jesus taught. You don't have to try to be good all the time to get into heaven. Yes, but I believe being a good person is about doing, like, being a good person. Uh, like, not necessarily, in my own.
me? Hold up. I'm not going to disclose what sponsor, but a sponsor dropped me for an ad because of this video. Even though in the video I say China does not run TikTok because the thumbnail and the title is does China run TikTok, they dropped me for the ad. A video I posted six months ago, they dropped me for a fucking, vi they dropped me for an ad because I posted, because I posted this YouTube video. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? I don't even want to work with them now. Like I like, dude, even if they like turned around and they were like, yeah, we want to work with you. I'd be like, oh, fuck yourself. Like, like, are you kidding me? Three inch for the sub. Global pandemic. Social distancing stopped teens and young adults from mingling in classrooms, clubs, or dorms. Millions of friendships, maybe lifelong friendships, that might have blossomed will never exist, with profound long-term consequences for our collective happiness. The good news is that it's not too late, and there are lots of friends to be found. We'll mix scientific- No, there's not. <laughs> I'm kidding, there is. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't get depressed, chat. There's no one. There's no one, though. You're alone in this world. Everybody's an actor. You live in the matrix. Information with actionable advice in this video, but we can't address every individual situation. People, cultures, and schedules are different. If you Flies suffer from sun. chronic loneliness, you can also watch the video we made about it. Okay, as with all important things in life, making friends is infuriatingly simple, but not necessarily easy. But it works through a few pretty straightforward mechanisms. The most important thing about making friends. No damn way this is a video. I like, <laughs> you got, bro, I'm sorry, but there's no fucking shot this is a video. A 12 minute video, what is he gonna say? What is he gonna say that's gonna be that fucking mind blowing? People make friends with other people when they spend casual time together. This is how our ancestors formed their relationships because humans lived in small, close-knit communities in which options for making friends were limited, so we just formed good relationships with the people who were around us. This is why it's so easy to form new friendships in school and university. Society locks you and your peers in a building for several years. You share similar activities, but more importantly, similar schedules. Yeah, making friends out of school immediately becomes 10 times harder. When you're in when you're in high school or college or like at your work if you work with a lot of people, it's easier to make friends because you're next to them. If you like dude, like if you're just doing a regular job or some shit you work from home, it's all it's it's very hard. You have to put yourself out there. I will say because like at that point, like you don't even meet people. So how the fuck do you have friends? David for the three hundred bets. Warped it for the three hundred bets. My bank just called me asking why I spent three hundred sixty on Twitch. Then stop spending money. Oh my god. Thank you for the three hundred bits though, and all the fucking subs. Overlapping and fluctuating social. Some dumb bro. Okay, Connor. Connor just asked, "Was it G Fuel that dropped the ad with you, dude? I am actively sponsored by G Fuel." Do you see the G Fuel fridge behind me? No, G Fuel did not drop me as a sponsor. I am actively sponsored by G Fuel. What? I'm literally, they're, I, if they didn't sponsor me anymore, I'd move the fuck fridge. What do you mean? I Circles form naturally giving you regular FaceTime and shared experiences with many different people. Time to find others with similar worldviews or senses of humor. Proximity can be more important than similar interests. One study found that in student dormitories, the distance between rooms was the strongest friendship predictor. Living closer together meant a higher chance of becoming friends. Wow. Another study showed that being physically present in a class a lot without saying a word makes others more sympathetic to you. So the most important principle of me What? Being in class and not talking makes you have more friends? That's not true. Another study showed that being physically present in a class a lot without saying a word makes others more sympathetic no. to you. No. Like, actually, no. Like, actually, no. You, dude, you're in a class and you don't talk. Nobody's going to be your friend. Also, another cap statement here. College classes, you might make friends. You will make less friends than you think you will in college classes. If you're in like a 40-person college class, you'll become friends with like three people, maybe. You're not going to be like buddies with like every person in the class like some people will say you will.
but you also don't want to be because everybody's different. So like, not everybody's gonna match your kind of vibe. You. What's so your favorite energy drink? G Fuel. Most important principle of making friends is to regularly spend time with people in the real world. This alone can make it happen automatically and trumps all other advice. But don't forget that making friends is not a numbers game or a competition. Don't compare. Dude, I was at the DMV today. This just this just reminded me of this shit. Sorry for the off topic. Because this guy's old as fuck. I was at the DMV today and some dude was like talking about how he was retired. What the fuck do people do when they're retired? Like, what do you do? Is it just vacation all the time? I feel like, like, what do you do? What do you do in life? You sit there? Like, I, you know what I, golf, 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 literally golf, literally live a happy life, bro, but what do you do? Like, say you're retired, you're 65, 70 years old. You're not going on vacation, you just sit at home. All I would do, you know what I would do every, I would move somewhere warm. Oh my God, that's why old people move somewhere warm. Because if you live in, if you live in the cold, you can't do anything. I was going to say, I would move somewhere warm and then like ride a bike. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do when I retire. I'm going to go somewhere warm and I'm going to ride a bike. And then I don't know. And then after that, it's just kind of winging it. I'm going to, it's going to be winging it after that. Like Florida. Yeah. That's why everybody in, that's what's so weird about Florida. Like as you start heading South, everybody is getting more and more thick Southern accents. And then you reach Florida and it's just like people from like New Jersey <laughs> and like New York, like no one has an accent in Florida, Harold or Kevin for the sub, or it's just so many different accents can make it happen automatically and trumps all other advice. But don't forget that making friends is not a numbers game or a competition. No, but like dead ass. I feel like if you if you're retired, dude, that's why so many people retire and then go back to work. Cuz life gets so boring. Like if you retire for a year and you're like 60 years old, you're not like you're not like going to join like a sports league. You're old. So like you just do nothing. Like it gets boring. Mr. Egg and Floggy for the sub. Somebody said, is my hair fake? No, my hair is not fake. Compare yourself to others. Everyone has a social calibrator that can change as you go through life. Spend time with your grandkids, literally. That is the only thing. Spending time with your grandkids. What if you don't have grandkids? Oh my God. What if you're 70 years old and like your wife's dead and you have no fucking family members? Somebody redeemed flex. Then what do you do? Sit there? Play fucking Candy Crush? I don't know. Jeffrey for the sub. I feel like life sucks. Travel? Where? You're si if you're 70 years old and you're retired and you don't have anybody, where are you traveling? What are you fucking... You're 70 years old and you're going on a fucking trip to Japan to go sightseeing? Like, no, you're not. You're not. Alex! Uh, Alex for the fucking $20 dono. W catching you live. Usually watch most VODs. As my uh, schedule gets busy, thanks for the entertainment. Well, thank you for watching me. Even if you're not watching me live, it means a lot. Uh, and yeah, Alex. Alex Semi... Semi... I don't know how to say your fucking name. Semiana, Semionov. Semionov. For the $20 dono. Not Soyce for the 300 bits. Are you playing... Are you planning on playing Modern Warfare 2 on stream? See, like, I hate when that question's brought up because I don't know the answer. What... Do we play MW... Wait, what do we play MW2 on stream? Hold up. I'm doing a poll right now. You guys will answer it while we watch this. Campaign. Multiplayer. I didn't spell multiplayer right. Multiplayer. SND. Or don't, don't play it. All right. Boom. Maybe you were more introverted. I'm not playing multiplayer, probably. If you want me to be real, if I play MW2, it'll either be the campaign or SND. It'll probably be SND with streamers whenever I do that one day. But the campaign, maybe. Would you guys want to watch me play the campaign? Yes or no? Most people are voting campaign. Or don't play it. And then SND is last. Why is, why is Search and Destroy last? That's literally the only like good multiplayer game. I would do the campaign. 
I would be down to do the campaign. Should we start the campaign Thursday? Do you guys want to do that? Oh, but then, but then I don't get to play Val. Vainster for the sub. I'll do that poll next. What do we do Thursday? What do we do Thurs? Val or campaign? Uh, Wyatt for the five hundred bits. I'm not a Christian, but my my fiance at one point was. The biggest breaking point for her shifting to not being a Christian was when she realized that my family and a bunch of my friends were just genuinely good non-Christian people without having to read a book. And we were all going to burn an eternal hell because we don't we didn't accept Jesus as our savior. And she, yeah, I'm assuming she just didn't agree with that. Uh, by the way, 70-year-old alone me, I am. What do you mean 70-year-old alone me, I am? What does that mean? But thank you for the 500 bits and the nice message as a teen but yearn for connection most people are voting for campaign thursday all right we could do that in your 20s maybe you were part of sprawling social circles but oh saturday you should do campaign oh thursday i gotta do on bands <gasps> there's too many things i gotta get done your friends in your 30s there is no right or wrong only right for you yeah literally after college you could theoretically never make a friend ever again and be satisfied if you have friends like, if you have, like, five friends, once you graduate college, you could just have those five friends for the rest of your life. Like, there's no need, there's no need to make new friends. David for the five of bets. I also live in New Jersey. Are you in South or North? See, that's a weird question. Uh, Not North. I am in more, like, Central-ish, but Central Jersey doesn't exist. Why we don't have enough As most friends. people say. The main reason for a lack of friendships is the simple fact that most we should do on bands on Thursday, do a late night stream, maybe a late night on echo for the sub, maybe a late night, like another night. I don't know when I would, though. Um, fuck. OK, well, most people are voting campaign for Thursday. Most people don't prioritize friendships nearly enough. Did we finish Dark Deception? Basically, yes. And then I rage quit. They don't realize until it's I was on the last level and then it glitched out and I quit late that retaining friendships demands a regular energy and attention. Although they are so important for happiness, friends often take a back seat to other life decisions. Work, commuting, romance, or kids take up so much time and energy that it's so much easier to crash on your couch and lose yourself in mindless activities. Especially as an adult, going for a bike ride- Oh, brother, what the fuck is this? Also, uh, Crucible, I'm probably gonna do on bands maybe next week. I don't know if I'm gonna do them- Wait, no, I might do them this week. Hold up. Yeah, I'll do them this Thursday. I'll do Unbans this Thursday, but I'm also probably going to do them next Thursday. Because next Thursday is going to be a sponsored stream. Not this Thursday. XX Mob. Next Thursday, I'll probably do Unbans and then the Multiverse is sponsored stream. But this Thursday, I'll do Unbans, then probably COD. Getting dinner or visiting a hobby store takes much more mental effort and commitment than it did after school when time ran slower and energy and curiosity were abundant. But it's not just adults who are too busy for friends. The average American teenager spends more time on TikTok every day than socializing at parties, events, or on the phone with friends combined. How many hours a day do y'all spend on TikTok? Established friendships don't require the same time investment. Somebody said, Joe, you missed my dono. I don't see your dono. Um, I'm scrolling in all your chats. I don't see any of your donos. One, two, somebody said five. Five hours a day on TikTok? Are you fucking kidding me? That is, dude, I spend less than that. That's actually insane. I spend probably like two. Investment as early friendships to keep up, but they do require some commitment. As life distracts you, it's easy to skip out on checking in when a friend goes through exciting or depressing times. And so many friendships fade for lack of attention, often by accident. Which is extra tragic because there is never only one person losing a friend, it's always at least two. Another thing that makes many people vulnerable- Cup of Joe for the 300 bits. My Arabic teacher told me people over there work, work to live and Americans live to work. Is the way friendship- Yeah! Networks are structured. I would, I would agree with that. Friendship paradox is the phenomenon that on average, most people bad. have fewer friends than their friends, which makes sense. How many friends do y'all have? Like, close friends. I feel like most people have, like, three. 
like three close friends, maybe more. I would say like close friends, I have like five. Like five close friends. Like genuinely close. And then I have and then I have other friends. And then I have like acquaintances. You have like close friends, friends, acquaintances. Most people would have like anywhere between like one and like five. Some people are saying zero. I am sorry if you have zero close friends. You're more likely to be friends with someone who has many friends than with someone who has few. You will make friends. You got to put yourself out there, though. Rather than being densely interconnected, friend networks are often built around central hubs. So if central people disappear from your life, this can deprive you of many connections at once. And yeah, because you usually make a friend and then you become friends with their friends. And so if you if you lose friendship with like the friend that brought you those other friends, then you lose all of those friends. It's kind of like a chain system. And it can lead to a distorted self-perception. Like, say you meet a guy named Bob. Bob is your friend. Bob makes you friends with Jeremy and Frank. So now you have three friends. If you stop being friends with Bob, you're no longer friends with Frank and Jeremy either. In most scenarios. Two inch for the three. I'm timed out, but I was saying to you, but I'm saying to you to kill yourself, but it was misinterpreted. Can you let me explain? Oh, too much told me to kill myself. What do you mean? Let me look at your user. Let's see what two inch uh, typed. He just said, kill yourself. How was that misinterpreted? I wasn't saying to you to kill yourself. It was misinterpreted. You just said kill yourself. That's not even How is that misinterpreted? Let's see that let's see the interpretation from 2 inch. Let's see what it meant. I told you what he told me. Look at DMs. Oh my fucking god. Why didn't you just say it now? Why is this like why is this some fucking extravaganza? Holy shit. Dude, if your explanation's shitty, I'm just gonna ban you. Bro, please. Then explain it. I said that when Joe said, what do you do if you have no grandkids and your wife is dead? I wasn't telling Joe to kill himself. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. He's unbanned. Or he's untimed out. Fair answer. Fair answer. That is facts. Other people said that. Fair. Fair. Not an L2 inch. That's fair. That you are less popular than- Unbanned. Or untimed out. Others, although you are perfectly average, it can get worse quickly with big life events. Maybe you move for school, work, or love. And Relax, I Ollie. Let's not say two inches annoying as fuck. Why are we starting shit in chat? He literally got untimed out. No reason to say that either. Left without social networks. Or you had a break. You should have said, I would just blank. Like, why? Like, dude. It, like, yes, you were answering my question, but you still just typed it. Up that left you with the smaller part of the formerly shared social pie. The reasons why you find yourself with less connection than you want are as diverse as people, but the underlying cause is almost always time. There is no shortcut. To make new friends and retain friendships, you have to prioritize relationships, spend time with people in real life, and make them feel that you care. So that's take facts. Because your... you can't just hang out with a friend. You gotta put in effort for a friendship. You can't only just, like, talk to them when you want to speak to them. I mean, I'm not saying you have to speak to a friend you don't want to speak to. Obviously, they would be a shitty friend. But, like, dude, you got to, like, put in effort yourself and to have a friend. And what you spend your life doing. How to make new friends. Studies have shown that new friendships can develop quite quickly, weeks after you meet someone. But it takes a few months for a casual friendship to become a close relationship with the biggest impediment being time invested and the quality of your interactions. To make friends, it helps if you intentionally look for people you have to- Yeah, how long do you think you have to know someone to be good friends with them? I would say a year. Like, you can become friends with somebody in, like, a week, but, like, actually hanging out with them to the point where it's no longer awkward to a degree, where, like, you genuinely feel like you're kind of one in the same rather than, like, a, an entirely different being- is like a year because like when you hang out with a new friend there's that awkwardness you know what i mean like you kind of feel not you you're fine like you want to hang out with them but you kind of feel awkward 
But after like a year, it's just like you're, they're your friend. Like they're just there. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a closer relationship. Uh, Beer Hunter for the 300 bets. I started working out and I feel so much better. How many times do you work out a week? Probably like five or six. Uh, I go three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off. Things in common with and who are open to three new years to become good friends with somebody. I feel like that's wrong. Relationships. You want to make it easy for yourself, so examine what kind of person you are. Generally speaking, extroverts tend to crave sensory stimulation, spicier foods, loud music, or the excitement of engaging a crowd. Introverts, often confused with shy people, tend to be more sensitive to sensory stimulants and prefer quieter surroundings, fewer people, and even less spicy food. Different places Introverts attract don't like spicy food? That's a thing? Different people. Not everybody can easily make friends at a bar or a football game. Not everybody finds a Why? Story. Like, why? I feel like that's not true in, like, individual scenarios, but maybe for, like, the broad average. Or through a park or a bookstore stimulating. Men especially form friendships around shared activities, but in general, it's a good idea to go to places that feel comfortable, where there are people you might like who do things you find interesting. Look for local clubs or opportunities to volunteer. Check out what hobby stores are around and dust off your space marines or see if there are new DMs. Just loiter at the GameStop and ask people if uh, if they want to play Modern Warfare with you. Just stand outside of your local GameStop and, like, interrogate every person that comes in. Two inch for the three. Sorry about that. Probably should have said what I would have done instead of just saying that. You're fine. D groups in your city and ask if you could join one. Check meetup apps for gaming nights or wine tasting. Yeah, post Join up at the local Walmart and just ask to be friends with people. That'll go so great. Guaranteed. Go to a local Walmart and just ask every person that you pass if they want to be your friend. That won't go bad. Sports club or look for people who go hiking. Or that would go fucking terrible. That would literally end so badly. Look at my last message. Oh my god, bro. Advice on how to get better at 110 hurdles. My time right now is a 17.4. You have to have a three-step, uh, being closer to the hurdle, having a good start. Just work on speed and explosiveness. Want to cook together. Another obvious avenue is your professional life. It helps if you work in a job that attracts people like you, so you might consider this when you choose a career. Deepening your relationship with colleagues can lead to great friendships, especially if you look for peers and there is no power imbalance. And of course, there are friends you've lost touch with. You may be able to revive some of these relationships. In some power way, imbalance? What would a power imbalance be in between friends? Like a boss or some shit? Like you're a boss and then like a fucking worker? All it needs is a call or an invitation. Research shows that more often than not... Yeah, go to your local Applebee's and just eat half-price apps and talk to other lonely people at the Applebee's. Oh, my God. The person will appreciate that you've reached out. There are likely way more opportunities to oh, spend... Oh, which one's more needy? So you have to be equal and want ...others than you are aware of. And if there aren't, you can take the initiative and create them. Invitations popular are and unpopular, that is not a power imbalance. Signals to start friendships. It's just popularity. So bring people together by having a dinner party, organizing a football game after work, or starting a board game group. I have a lot of friends that are either more or less popular than, like, myself or some shit. Like, when I was in high school, I, like, I wasn't popular, but I had friends that were and weren't. Everybody appreciates people who organize fun things, and the simple act of reaching out can kickstart a self-propelling upward spiral of well-being, fun, and connectedness that can seriously improve the life of everyone around you in meaningful ways. If you meet someone you vibe with... I will say being, in pop being popular in high school is, like, the most useless thing ever. Like, it, people, like, brag... Like, if somebody brags about how popular they were in high school when they're, like, 30, they're a fucking loser. Like, no one cares that you are popular, that you were popular in high school. Like, actually, nobody gives a fuck. It matters. It, it doesn't matter in any way, because the second you leave high school, those connections that they're so proud of disappear. Because the second you leave high school, you're probably never going to see any of those people fucking ever again. Like, 90% of my high school classmates, I will never see again. It's pretty scary doesn't matter. to make the first move. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean anything. You bragging about how good you were in high school is fucking stupid. Not Alexis for the 300 bets. Do you stand Luna? Who the fuck is Luna? 
but they may feel the same way. E Only 90, probably more. Like, realistically, my graduating class was, like, pretty small. Like, how many people are in your high school class, chat? Not your classroom, your class. Like, your freshman class, your sophomore class. My graduating senior class was, like, 160 kids. <laughs> I knew all of them. I will probably... I will probably see five or six of them. I'll probably see 10 of them in the next year and a half. In the next 10 years, I'll probably see 20 or 30 of them. And that's it. Like, there, I guarantee you, like, dude, there's one kid named, like, like uh, what was his name? Dude, I literally forget some of their names now. I remember their faces. There was one kid, he was like a surfer. I will never see that kid in, in my entire life. I, I gra When I was at my graduation, I left that day thinking about, like, holy shit, I could point out the kids that I for sure will never see in my entire life. And if I ever see them, it'll be a shock. Like, 10 years from now, I'm in a fucking Wawa. One of them walks in, I'd be like, holy shit. Luna is a group, it's not one person. What is Luna? Equally interested in a friendship. The fuck is Luna? But also blocked by fear of rejection. So it's worth going for it. Worst case, they're not interested, which will sting for a few hours. But the best- What is with chatters coming in and just like announcing the view count? Like, it's so weird. June 9th is my birthday. Why are you telling 2inch when your birthday is? It's so random. It's so random. This case could it's be like a, a thing that Twitch chatters do. A flung friendship. A risk well worth the reward. One Joe, I know you won't see this, but your streams are very interesting and bring a sense of understanding to the unknown. Thank you. I don't do I don't do philosophy streams very often because uh, they're not that popular with my chat, but they are fun to do. Uh, a lot of my chatters like them, so I do them like every other week, every three weeks. So you formed Dark early for the connections. Stuff. Check in whether the uh, David for the three hundred minutes. I'm Puerto Rican, and my Spanish teacher is Cuban, and he tell he teaches us words, but his meaning is different, and my mom is pissed. Well, yeah, there's different like it, it's different like lingos in Spanish. It's like uh, specific Spanish versus like uh, speaking Spanish. It's like proper English versus what people actually say. They have important things happening in their life. Of course, it's important not to be overbearing, but the more time you invest, the more opportunity you have to engage in meaningful banter or silly jokes. The fact that friendships take time also means that you need to be patient and kind with yourself, especially if you're out of practice. Things will not improve. I also think a part of having a friend a surefire way of having a friend is making fun of them and them not caring. If you make, f if, if you're friends with somebody, you should be comfortable making fun of each other. Because like, if you make fun of a stranger, that's weird. But if you make fun of your friend, if you, when you can make fun of them and they make fun of you, you're friends. That's what a friend is. When you can make fun of each other. Move overnight and not slowly, care. Step by step. If you keep up. Well, you might care, but you don't care that much. Wait for the fringe bits. Have you seen Elon Musk shirtless? His chest looks like a box. I think I've seen a picture of him before. Yeah. Andrew for the 500 bits. Love you, bro. You're my favorite Twitch streamer. Thank you. Thank you for the nice message. Open up, care, and share. Many people don't have an issue being around others, but struggle to turn acquaintances into friends. So let's talk about two important principles that make it more likely that you'll connect. Caring and sharing. In general, our favorite topic is ourselves and the things we care about because we are literally at the center of our own universe. Facts. So people tend to like people who are genuinely interested in them. So if you want to make friends... That is actually true. If you... The best way to make friends or just talk to, like, anyone in a relationship is to be interested in themselves. If you're interested in somebody else, they'll like you. Goal should be trying to learn what makes them tick. Almost always. Tick. Just as important as caring about others is reciprocity and openness. To connect, you need to share the experiences that made you, you. All right, word. I get it. All right, I'm done with the video. We're going to we're gonna call it here. I got to go fucking eat. W stream in the chat. That was a great philosophy stream. Haven't done one of those in a while. Um, the real question, though, is who the fuck do we raid? Who the fuck do we raid? Tommy Unold is live. I have a feeling we raid Tommy Unold. I haven't seen Tommy Unold live in a grip. Um, all right. 
W stream in the chat. Uh, we had a great active chat today. I mean, not a massive uh, view count comparable to a regular React stream, but obviously philosophy streams are a bit more niche. Um, so I don't really care. I love streaming for you guys. I love uh, entertaining the people that are here. Um, but yeah, uh, I love doing philosophy streams. I'm glad uh, you guys like watching them, and I will continue to do them in the future. Uh, tomorrow, I will not be live. Uh, I am off on Tuesdays. Wednesday is Batman Telltale. Thursday, we're going to probably do Unbans and then the COD campaign. Um, Friday is going to be Reactions, Exclamation Point Discord, if you want to join the Discord. Saturday is going to be Cooking Sim. Uh, Sunday, Reactions. And then Monday, we're probably going to start a horror stream. Uh, or a horror video game. I don't know yet. But yeah. Uh, I hope you guys had fun watching the stream. Um, MC Imposter for the Uh, I haven't been in stream for a month. I will resume to watch you every day. Dude, it's fine. You don't have to make every stream if you don't want to. But yeah. Hope you guys had fun watching the stream. I will see you guys later. We're going to rate it 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.